Hello, and welcome to the Adventure Archive. My name is Ryan, and tonight we will be recapping the first 30 sessions of Dark Kingdoms that happened prior to our very first stream, which was two weeks ago. With me tonight, we have Sam as Cordelia Belmont, the Dampier Sword Dancer Fighter. We have Matt as Victor of the Caldair, the human uh, death cleric of Chernabog. Um, we have Jason as Cutter the Faceless, the rogue duelist um, Derakul. We have um, Eric as our mysterious warlock with his uh, imp familiar Annie, also a Dampier. Jess as Dariana Bloodright, our Seraphage blood sorcerer. And unfortunately, tonight we do not have um, Andy uh, beat him, um, but we do have his baby uh, stepping in for us. Um, so to get started, um, I guess we can talk a little bit about how this all came about. We had the whole groups together. We've, we've all been in some other campaigns and stuff together. Um, and uh, we are actually all part of a meetup group that uh, runs D&D &D in our local area. And I had always wanted to run an evil campaign and I had met um, everybody here and we decided to try it. And I think so far it's worked pretty well. I'm getting nods. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Sam, how do you feel about it? You're the, you're the most squeamish of us. The least, oh, yeah. awesome. It's been great. We you should know? tell the story of uh, when I brought the skinned Halloween mask. Oh my night. god! Oh my god! Are we, we just will. gonna go right I out the gate? Like I, I could go get pictures. I could go get the mask. I have. Oh my god! Some... You when... definitely should get the mask. I think you should get the mask. All right, I will get. You the know mask. what I, I think... also have is um, if I can find it. Remember when I did all of those intros and it was the same thing over and over and over again? Yes. I have that, and I found all my old session intros for when I used to do them. So let's look at um, Jason. You should definitely get the mask. Also, when we talk <laughs> about Tongue Taker, we can talk about um, a couple of the other things that Tongue Taker has uh, has done or brought, or or that um, Eric. We'll, now we'll get there. Has done. We'll, get, we'll there. get there. We'll get there. <laughs> um, I was just thinking that. So let's just uh, let's just start. I don't have. A, I started my session intros on five. So with our very first session, um, we have actually Matt Victor, our wonderful uh, player here, um, was taking notes and giving them uh, session titles before we ever even thought about streaming. So on September fourth, twenty nineteen, we have summoned. Um, and uh, when we started, um, there is, this is uh, Midgard, the map that you're seeing here on the screen. Um, and uh, it um, is a, a setting published by Cobalt Press, which is awesome. Please follow everything Cobalt Press ever does. Um, and uh, when Jason gets back, we'll have him zoom in. Um, there's the mask. Oh no. So we'll explain why this is important shortly. Um, but Jason, could you um, could you zoom in on Morgau on the map? The best part about going online is I didn't have to look at this anymore. Oh, you know what we don't have right now because I don't we don't have a roll twenty one to open is any music. And I can't provide it because legally Twitch won't let me play Celine Dion songs, so <laughs> true. can't help you, or I would. <laughs> Sam, I found a I found a cover band from Long Beach that did uh, that song, and I feel like we could buy that from them. I bet they paid to cover Perfect. it. And I bet Excellent. <laughs> How uh, uh, how's the zoom on that? Too much? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, you're behind the mask. It's cool. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, could the you? Previous uh, telemarketer. Yeah. <laughs> they never know. Could you... Um... Can I have your customer ID, please? <laughs> um, uh, could we... Could you get music playing in your headset that would actually translate to here? Is that a thing that we could do quickly? Um... Uh, do you want me to just queue up um, the VLC? Yeah, but there's not a rotating... 
Yeah, that's fine. If you could, if you could do that where it's off of the uh, the other cable without messing it up, um, just so we have something. Because I'm gonna drive myself crazy if I if I'm just listening to our voices and not any music in the background, and I don't oh. want the chat to do the same thing too. So, um, you could also just start in the studio mode, bring up another browser window, not size it to anything, put it behind everything, and I'll just open roll twenty. Okay. Yeah, just do that. Sorry, people, some technical difficulties real quick. Let me get, um, and then you can just open roll 20 in that window um, and I'll just play music through, through roll 20. Sometimes we play Dungeons and Dragons and it's Occasionally. sometimes really fun. Uh, oh, and open up Mists of Midgard instead of Dark Kingdoms. Awesome. Give us one second, we'll get right back to the recap. And you can just get the, um, it's the, that window's in the chat box. So you can just drop it um, a little farther to your left. What mug do you have, Sam? Oh, it's Zelda? And every time mm. I take a sip, I'm trying to like line it up so that it looks like she has fangs, but there's very hot skin yeah, yeah. here, so That's I, I can't. Let me see Your mug game has been strong this week, huh? My mm. mug game is always real strong. <laughs> here we go. I love uh, it. Oh, wait, it's kind of disappearing. The horn mug. Nice. I figured. Oh, uh, I might. No, I'll show it. I got I got I meant to post a picture of this. I got a mug for Cordelia oh, or a cup. It's the pimp cup. It's the pin yeah, cup that it. she has yeah. in game. So. Yeah, this is my this is my tongue taker mug. I use a different one for uh, the vest. I remember the first time you put beer in that. You put a whole beer in it, and it was like a, <laughs> yeah, a no, quarter. It here. was not this even full. Hold like so much. So yeah, actually, you can't can quite see the shell. Filled to here. Hey, chat. Can you hear? Uh, can you hear music now? Just let us know. Okay. But it disappears in the green screen, kind of. Okay. Should I go get my dead Dre IPA can? Oh God, we're definitely gonna do that. Okay. No music. Do you? This uh... is gonna take four hours. <laughs> it's not. We'll get there in a second. It's not. Once it's we start beautiful. rolling, it'll go. So, do you hear music, Jason? Because it should just come straight through your headset. Oh. Uh... As long as you hear music, then you'll get it. Let me change my... Jay Miller 2377 says, I don't hear anything. Yeah, neither does uh, Janelle. Jordan has never heard anything in his entire we life. We can answer, though. NBA K9 wants to know, is Cutter a changeling? Cutter is not a changeling. Cutter is a Dara Kool. We can answer, though. NBA K9 uh, wants to know, is Cutter a changeling? Midgard Cutter is not a changeling. Is Cutter is a Dara We can answer, though. NBA K9 wants to know, is Cutter a changeling? Cutter is not a changeling. Cutter is a Dara We can answer, though. NBA K9 wants to know, is Cutter a changeling? is it still going really bad guys man it was like echoing like crazy I don't yeah know it should just up. be a window capture onto a new window with world 20 and that's it and then it should go straight to your headset okay i guess it's good now sam this this joke is for you all right let me try it again okay i guess it's good now Sam, uh, this, this joke is for you. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me try I think again. that was from a few okay, episodes. Oh, I keep now. getting echoes. <laughs> Sam, uh, this, this joke is for you. If you can't right, do it, then you're going to I think that was from a few episodes. Could be your mask. I keep getting echoes. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll just have to take the mask off. What a bummer. We'll just give it like 30 more seconds, and then we'll... Uh... Oh, Eric, I wish I had a beer right now. <laughs> oh, we took the mask off. I feel bad. Oh. You don't have a refrigerator? I do, but uh, it's been a long week. It's so hot. It was so hot this week, and yeah. teaching has been not good. It's not working so hot. 
Don't even worry about it. Fuck it. Okay. I have music playing, so I'm fine. So Great. if you guys want music playing, but, yeah, it's fine for you. That is we a good metaphor talking, for the they game, don't though. Need music, they right? don't need music. So, um, I, can you zoom out on this uh, on the map a little bit? Yes. How's and that? just get like the whole Kingdom of Morgoth. It'll. It's, there's just a little bit of a, a lag. I just want the whole kingdom kind of. And actually, if you go to the right side, um, that's perfect. You can hit on the um, like the thing that's like three um, three sheets and go to. Um, the thing that says like uh, kingdom borders or something like that, where it'll actually like highlight oh, individual kingdoms. The layers, okay, and kingdom borders or whatever. It's something like that that says like uh, or political boundaries or something political like that. Political boundaries. Yeah, click that. And does it highlight How's things it? on the map? Yeah. Can you see it? Okay, let me know when you can. It'll pop up in just a second. Perfect. So this is the kingdom of Morgau. Ten years ago in world time, Lucan, the vampire lord of Morgau and Duresh, which is in the lower part, um, kind of where like the dark greenish is, everywhere below it kind of cuts in on the bottom right. He ruled that after he took it over um, by befriending slash seducing the previous king of uh, Morgau, um, taking his kingdom and then conquering Duresh. The Ghoul Imperium lives under the Black Hills, basically. The Black Hills... The Iron Crags, like uh, Zobek, the purple, the red, a little bit of the blue, the Rothenian Plains areas. And that's where the intelligent ghouls are from the Ghoul Imperium. Um, ten years ago, the vampires of Morgau allied with the Ghoul Imperium to take over uh, Krakovar, which is everything in like the... Um, uh, if you look at everywhere from where it says... you want to zoom in once for me? And then uh, we'll see in just a second. Perfect. And just scroll down just a tiny bit. So everywhere where it says um, bu -bu 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 -bu, the commandery of lost souls up, where it says Krakovar at the top, they Blitzkrieg took that over um, about 10 years ago. And it was a huge event in the world when they allied and did that. And the world is not happy. And they've been kind of, on edge for the last 10 years. When we started our campaign, um, there was a, um, uh, in the city of Hanksburg, which on this map is kind of bottom middle, um, uh, right where it says Duresh, and this is Temple of Apostola, right north of that is Hanksburg. There was a uh, leader called um, uh, Lord Rojan, the glutton of Hanksburg. He's this enormously yeah. obese, disgusting, um vampire who does nothing but drink blood collect uh money and um have sex with his wives until they die um so when we started all of the players in some way shape or form worked for rojan all the players that were originally alive or not brought on later um so it started with sam as cordelia she is a do you want to explain how you got to work with rojan uh sure um well like i don't think even the other players know that is that what we're sharing no um, it's not a secret it's just nobody asked well i mean they know that you're a blood sister and they know that you're working for rojan that's pretty much it okay and you're, you're okay. really good at religion yes so okay so um it's not like a secret just nobody cares <laughs> um so cordelia belmont um is so uh the Blood Sisters is a religious order uh, within this world. They're like the uh, state they, religion of, of Morgau at this point. Um, and they're, they worship Morena. And um, Brian made the mistake of letting me choose what um, our mantra was in the sense of like, if I had to identify myself as another Blood Sister to a Blood Sister. And I was like, there'd be some words that we would exchange. So the uh, the holy words to Morena are Morena woo. And <laughs> that is canonical. And I use it every opportunity I get. Um, really fits into the vibe of the evil campaign. It. <laughs> it really That's does. I was a mistake to be invited to this game. I really was. <laughs> were um, so um, she is a uh, worked kind of, uh, or she got enlisted to start working for the Blood Sisters um, as kind of an initiate. She's not a full Blood Sister yet. Um, 
and she is basically on loan to Lord Rodian as a personal assassin at the time um, on behalf of the Blood Sisters. And she, uh, so Cordelia's dump stat is intelligence and that works very well for the character. Um, I've had to roll frequent religion checks and have never rolled above a 10. So uh, it actually works really well. It's unfortunate, but Cordelia doesn't actually care about the Blood Sisters. The Blood Sisters are just a religious organization that basically honors their goddess through killing people. And Cordelia is really good at killing people. So she's like, sign me up. Awesome. Let's go. Gotcha. Um, Cutter was also working with Rodian at the time. And what were you doing there? Well, um, there's a bit of a secret backstory there. Let's just say he's uh, originally from the Ghoul Imperium and uh, can't go back for one reason or another yet. And um, found um, found work with Rodion. Rodion was a bit of a savior to him and he felt uh, somewhat indebted. And so was a very loyal fixer, let's say. And then got, you know, recruited with the rest of this bunch here who all just want to be fast friends. And Cotter, you know, being an evil character and uh, very duty-driven, doesn't really want any of that. So he's just kind of along for the ride until uh, his his debts are paid or he can return home, essentially. The mission. Yep. Um... It's all about the job. And uh, Beatum is our gnome divination wizard. He was also working for Rodian at the time. He was doing some like fortune telling and things like that. Um, and Beatum, as evidenced by uh, what happened on the last campaign, has a drug problem. There is a drug in game called Requiem that lets you actually um, talk to the spirits of dead people. And he is quite the addict. Um, so uh, in... Uh, let's just say drugs might be involved in why he worked with Rodian for so long. Everyone else died or was added in later, so we'll get to that. Victor, though, our, our Matt, our friend here, started out as a character named Dre. So do you want to give just a brief description of Dre? And you can even talk about, you know, the, the, the secret bits. Definitely. Um, so Dre was a character from Cobalt Press's Midgard setting called uh, Shadow Fey, and I had always played dwarfs my whole life. And so I thought, oh, it's an evil campaign. I've never had Ryan as a DM. Let's go completely out of my comfort zone. Uh, Shadow Fae Ranger. And it was almost comical how bad it was. I'm pretty sure he had a cat that could appear out of the shadows. And so the we never figured out how to use did, it. We did a home brood. I knew how to use it just fine. You didn't oh. figure out how to use it. So the problem is, and part of your is part of um, Dre's background. Well, do you want to say what what the deal was there? Yeah. So Dre was a pretty complex character. Um, Dre was born uh, Lorena Drell as a as a female a twins with her brother, and was in a pretty abusive family. And uh, uh, long story short, she she takes gets rid of her brother and take assumes his identity, and is appears on the outside to be a male. Uh, ranger from the Shadow Fae um, and using Dre's identity. Awesome. So, um, oh, and we did actually get an alert pop up on screen. Things are working. Thank you so much for the follow yeah. rating. Um, so, what happened with um, Dre's subclass? He had a Shadow Beast that was kind of like a familiar but we just could never really settle on the fact that it's not a familiar, that it's a weapon that is just a shadow that is basically his rage, her rage, their rage that would come out that they could fight with. But then Dre had a habit of trying to like summon it and use it as like a familiar to go like <laughs> yeah. scout stuff out. It, um, it was not good. It was not good. And I think the biggest thing though, is that I've struggled being in an evil campaign because uh, my demeanor is not uh, the He's most. He's like evil. the nicest guy any of us have ever met. Yeah, so, so I yeah, would say this: like sure. Dre, yeah. Dre was too good. Was too, was not and evil a enough. A little overly complicated. I think you really try to yeah. pull in from a lot of areas, and it just kind of made it complicated. And then rangers are a little bit complicated, and then the subclass was a little bit complicated. And I think it made it difficult. So <laughs> at some point, he died, 
And then when me and um, me and Matt got together, I was like, let's just make an evil character that's just evil from the beginning. Let's pick a, a class that's evil. Let's pick spells that look evil. And let's make something like a really easy background that's just evil. And Victor is so good. Like, he's wow. so good. His, his Russian Christopher Walken um, accent kills me every time. Um, and it's just great. It's great. Um, I'm very fond of Victor, yes. Um, and then Sylvester was a character called Tongue Taker. We'll talk about all of this. And I like it when he carries me like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's that awesome. was the best That's beat awesome. impression That's awesome, I've Jason. ever heard. <laughs> um, he, was a, he was a Trollkin um, uh, uh, soldier for uh, Morgan and Duresh. Yeah. Um, and, and Dre was actually conscripted into that too. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit, Eric, or? Sure. Uh, I mean, basically, uh, if you're not familiar, uh, Trollkin, I guess the normal equivalent would be maybe like a half orc. Um, yeah. They yeah. are uh, kind of a tribal folk from the north. Um, they don't use names, though. So uh, he was called Tongue Taker. They're often named after actions or personality traits. So he had a lot of different names Mudfoot, Dead Eyes, Make Widows Cry. Uh, not to his face, but forgets to bathe and smells like feet. Um, but he was uh, the last of his tribe. They were killed off fighting uh, a bunch of, on uh, a big battle, fighting reaver dwarves. And then kind of he was the last man standing when a bunch of soldiers from Hanksburg showed up and uh, killed off the dwarves. And so he went with them. And he had and the best in-game getting... snack ever. Oh my oh, yeah. God. No, oh my God. So, so good. So, so he loves, <laughs> loves taking tongues from the dead. Yeah. So one day he just shows up with a brown bag and middle of the game, he was like, I want to go, is there a butcher or something? I can go get some stuff. I want to buy, I want to buy some tongues. I want to eat some tongues. And he found one, I believe it's cow tongues that you found. Um, and yeah. it was just like, sure, I got some. And he's like, cool, I have one and, I, and I'm going to eat one. And he pulls out this brown bag, like in, in person, in, in, in game, real life, yeah. IRL, <laughs> pulls out this brown bag, pulls out this big red tongue and just takes a bite and eats it. And so it, good. it turned out to be like, it was molded like jelly tongues, right? Yeah, yeah, I just made some <laughs> red gelatin and uh, molded it into tongue shapes. So, <laughs> so good. Um, the multiple things have come up like that. Like when Cutter first busted out his mask, and Sam about Peter self in laughter and fear, uh, and couldn't even More look fear. at him to play the game. I sat across the table. She from was, Jason yeah, she was facing yeah. me and yeah. just was like this for ten minutes straight. I feel like, and just couldn't even look yeah. at me, even when the game continued. Good times. Um, it was awesome times. and terrible. It so that's how the, that's how it all kind of started. That's everybody when we first started, and when everything everybody first started, they were summoned to Rojun from the various parts of the the city or this or that um and they were basically told hey i got a job for you and that first job was um in the episode called summoned um we actually went to uh eh, that's not even and they were basically told that there is there are people dying in the city and when they're found they have um these wounds on them and organs missing and you need to go figure it out so the group went, um, explored around the city, um, got to know each other. Beat them, had a bunch of familiars killed, um, stomped on right. by Tongue Taker a bunch of times. Um, he didn't tell me out of familiar. There's just all yeah. of a sudden oh, a snake. Oh, that was the best. Yeah. I looked down, there's a snake. I stomped on it. Is there a picture of... Uh, of oh, of okay. That? So I'll do... Can I do a little bit of context on the sure. drawing? So I have a terrible attention span during games and need the equivalent of a kid like drawing on the tablecloth at dinner, basically. So I did these tiny little pencil doodles as we went. Um, these ones, I think I did after the fact. I think I was actually like doing them at work and I like posted them on our Discord like, oh, I mean, I didn't do this. I was on a break. I wasn't doing this a couple of times. Um, and uh yeah so then after during each game i would like kind of as things happen do these little sketches so they are little doodles um but 
they're fun. I only have about 11 sessions worth of them because then we switch to online. Do you so want to direct one, me one a particular cutter, one? Like office yeah, which, cutter. Which one, uh, which one would be applicable for this? Yeah, none I, of these are really named. I, so. Oh, so, okay. I named them like one dash. Do you, can you look at them and like. Oh, oh yeah. No, one that's dash. Like the end. One dash. Yeah. Well, I can see them on my screen. So it's like one dash. What would it be? Um, okay. Let me open it too and I can direct you. Okay. Sorry. Um, Let's I go think back to the map say until she finds one dash one. Yeah, she'll figure it out. Um, so, so while we look at that, basically the group um, made their way around the city of Hanksburg. I actually have a Hanksburg map. I wish if it's I one was. One. What's up? One dash one. One dash one. One dash one. And these are also pictures like taken with my phone. So high quality. Yeah. Oh yeah, so this was Tongue Taker buying him a new snake. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's <laughs> nice. That's that's perfectly centered on there, Jason. Good job. Um, oh, I love it so much. Yeah, so good. He was so proud of himself. Tongue Taker was like, "I got you a snake." I mean, Tongue Taker was pretty out. lovable. Tongue Taker was great. He was too good I for miss us. Him he so said, "That's good. why." That's why he was. He, he was saved taken. Trey, episode one. He saved Cordelia. Oh sure. yeah. So so in the first episode. As the group was looking for um, the culprit, they went around a bunch of places that don't really matter that much. <laughs> Wait, is Sketchrisk in here with us right now? <laughs> um, I wish I wish she was. I should I should shoot him a message on Twitter real quick and tell him that um, we're uh... his job is in jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well. You know, Sam's been doing art from the beginning, and we all love it very, very much. Oh, um, then I so chickened out I, and didn't want it to be on the stream. And didn't want it to be on the stream, and it's on the stream anyway. Well, um, this is like, these are little cute little doodles. I could just be like, oh, it was just a sketch. That's why it's not like sketch. Restrict. I love those. You got to check those yeah. again. I, I, I know, know, I'm going to go back. Shame, but yeah i love the little doodles there's some i gotta say i went back through them all today and like there's some really cute shit in here yeah <laughs> actually i think i've got because i've got my old uh character you printed sheet. them all out um, i remember the next time we played yeah. you had them printed out i thought i about cried i was like yeah. that's the sweetest thing <laughs> yeah i've got i've got a whole bunch right here i've got you like what happened last time i've got me throwing the sack down the stairs and then yeah. dragging it back up <laughs> Oh, we'll get to all those. That's those why you got it. You got to start doing these again. I miss I will, these. Okay? I'm going to show the tarot cards what to do. So anyway, what happened in the session so being is fucking silver rose. I mean, there's some classic <laughs> ones in here. There's some yeah. really good shit. Um, yeah. So the group was was hunting around, and they came across a couple devils. Actually, um, some bearded devils. They got into a fight, um, and Dre, uh, who was Matt at the time, um, didn't really read all those spells correctly because he totally could have bounced out. But what he did was. He saw an alley with two shapes at the end and it was a trap because someone was like, help me, help me. What? So so he literally did this like shadow walk that he got for being a shadow yeah. fae and went on the other side to the alley wall behind these two shapes and both ended up being bearded devils at like third, no, fifth level that you yeah. guys were, I think we started at. Um, and no, were immediately there. fucked, just immediately fucked. And, and Tongue Taker ran in Saved his ass yeah. and got him out of there. And then well, through it, she was triggered, right? It was a it was a female voice screaming thing. And, and so that was part thing. of it yeah, was yeah. the eyes went silver and yeah, was sure. not making good decisions. But, but so, Tom so Taker was mad. Tom Taker yeah. was pissed because he's At dim. Dre. He's dim. Yeah, Dre. He yeah. was a dim witted fellow, but he knew fighting and he knew strategy and to teleport into the back of an into alley, the back. He was yeah. like, ah, he was so mad at you for that. <laughs> So they beat those guys, and basically what it came down to is there was a gnome that made a deal with a gym eater called Coronax, um, and uh, and when they um, was that a devil? Coronax. Uh, it was. It was a gym yeah. eater devil. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Coronax we found later after we tracked them into uh, that. Basement, right? Basement. Yeah. Yeah. So they found the the um the shop that was the um it was a gym 
uh, like a like a jeweler's shop, um, and eventually found this little gnome um, that had killed all of the people and cut out their hearts um, and turned them into crystal. Uh, with the help of the gym eater devil, she had made a deal with them that she would get famous um, and become like the best jeweler or whatever. Um, and she just had to give him five hearts, which she had given him five hearts. When the group went down into the basement of the shop, they found the gym eater. And the gym eater, gym eater basically said, we can fight or, you know, I get to take some of these hearts with me. Um, I'll give you like 5,000, you know, worth of gems. And he says this as he's eating like a ruby the size of an apple, just literally like munching on it. I'll give you this bag of gems and bounce and not come back. Or we fight, and the group is like, "Fuck it, give us the gems." Um, we'll just say he ran, and that's what happened. So, and they were able to convince Rogan that that's what happened. They even got all the crystal hearts, except for one that he said he was going to take with him. Um, we and, also uh, accidentally killed the gnome shopkeeper. Yes, Beatum was very because upset that you killed the gnome, but you put her into the bag of holding. We put her in the bag of holding, and we were opening up minutes. and pulling her out. So she can get air yep. and then shoving her back in and then forgot to open it again. Yeah. So, so, so it could again. last for 10 minutes um, in a bag of holding without air. So like every nine minutes, they would like lift her out and then stuff her back in. And then, then we forgot about Stuff it. happened and they forgot. So this is <laughs> interestingly, Jason, Eric. Do you want to go to just one, two, just because we're getting like ahead of where the drawings are. So let's just oh, do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Her name was one, Annie. Two. Oh, was it Annie? Is that crazy? Yeah, it was the Emerald that Dove. Is crazy. Was the jewelry shop, and the the gnome's name was Annie. If you which have is kind of come back please, around. Please say them. So this is Dre went into a store, wanted to buy two tongs because he wanted to buy them for tongue taker. <laughs> well, to I thank him. To thank one, him for. Three. Yeah. yeah. See, all these guys are playing classic D and D, trying to be best buds. <laughs> we should probably talk a little bit about that. You knew we were going to like. You knew we were like the die. thought processes of. Yeah. playing an evil campaign and what that means from a role-playing oh, standpoint. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know? Why don't we run through the recap real quick and yeah. then talk about that stuff at the end. I do one three. The this is one of my favorite ones. And this came back later, actually, which is fun. Yeah, because I had a lot of, I mean, even at the top of these session lists, you know, there's this evil is a couple bad choices, which is what I said over and over and over again to try to get people to realize. But yeah, we'll definitely talk about the, the, the evil campaign. So that's Atticus. Oh, Atticus. This, is what, this, I, this one I call foreshadowing right here. This yeah. is. Yeah. Which is wait, crazy. wait, I can't believe I almost forgot about this. So Atticus <laughs> was this extremely attractive young man in um, Hanksburg um, that Cordelia <laughs> was having um, carnal relations with. And throughout the entire first um, uh, session, first and second session, Atticus stuck with the party as an NPC. Um, so I really wanted the party to really, really get to know Atticus really, really well. And at one point, Cutter, who, um, do, do you want to say why you're Cutter the Faceless? Or did you say that already? Um, Let's just say Cutter mean, wears faces. Cutter yeah. Cutter I, people's faces off and wears them. Yeah. And well, I guess the rest, of the, the rest yeah. of the party has seen me. Yeah. 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 Briefly. For a second. Yeah. For a second. So um, I have a... And he told Atticus that uh, Atticus had a very pretty face. So we'll get back to that. Um, right, so Atticus fought with the whole, with the party. Not in a deliverance entire... kind of way, okay? Not that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got a pretty mouth, Atticus. <laughs> um, uh, so Atticus fought with the party the whole time before they went back to Rojan after they defeated the gym eater. And then um, session three. Um, Wait, hold on. We're still, we're still on two. Oh, man. You did a lot so of we'll art just cruise through. We'll just cruise through. Just do two, one. That's because I rolled the lowest and had to do the recap and didn't really remember. Um, yeah. And then... Wait, wait, wait. No, let's get 2-1 up first. Yeah, we all love the drawings. Uh, so that's, they, uh, so that's Cordiv trying to figure out what happened last time. Okay, do 2-2. Two, two. It's weird because like, I'm waiting to see them on the stream and then it's like, yeah, I know it's like a couple seconds delay. Yeah. Um, so we put... Initially, we were just going to leave the bag with the body. We we're going to like oh. just get rid of it down into the basement and then yep. go to two, three. And then we decided that we did want to keep it and Tongue Taker had to like go down and get it. Um, and he just had to like drag it back up the stairs. <laughs> yeah. um, and then two, four is my interpretation of Rodion not really being happy when we reported back that we let 
the devil go. Oh no, sorry. To oh god. Okay, yes. There we go. Sorry, um, I went backward. Oh no, you're fine. Ah uh, yes. He you let him go. And then two five was Dre's reaction. Oh man, some of this stuff I like I think, don't. And he looks remember. too skinny in that in that doodle. Yeah. <laughs> so where are yeah. we in the story? Have we got? Okay, to so we haven't got there yet. yet. So on session okay. three, you guys went back to oh Kyanite crystal. That's what that was called. You spelled yeah. it very wrong, but it does say Kyanite. So um, they went back afterwards to Rodion and Rodion with 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 one no. I think the crystal, the, 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 um, you guys kept one heart and he got yeah, the other one. Yeah, he gave ones. us one. Yeah, because it went, he was like, tentacles. yeah, um, and 5,000 gold worth of gems and stuff. So yeah. you guys went back to Rodion and basically said the gym devil got away, but we found out it was a, this gym eater devil and we found one of the hearts. And Rodion basically said, you'd let him go, fuck it, whatever. I don't really care anyway. And like Chuck the heart um, and his, you know, Chamberlain. Um, you know, caught it um, and went away with it. But he was like, it was basically just a test. I need to know you guys actually know what you were doing. You basically know what you're doing. So what I want you to do is fetch me a Perinalian bride. If you go back to the uh, Midgard map, um, we can uh, kind of show where Perinalia is in, in comparison to Morgan and Resh. But basically... There is this um, girl that he had heard of named Dejana Severe, who was very famous. She's this 15-year-old, apparently beautiful young girl um, who was this archer and this up-and-coming um, warrior. And at 16, she was going to join the Order of the White Lions in Clarsaya, the capital of Perinalia, which is a, a, a kingdom. Um, per, in this world, Perun Mavros is the god of war. Um, so Perun actually is the patron of this city. Um, and then his daughter is a demigod who rules it. And it's a female run city. So men are not allowed to have um, jobs. They can have jobs, but they have to be like mean. It's, it's like, it's like what fantasy world think women are like. That's how they treat men in this one. So they're not allowed to learn to read. They're not allowed to have weapons. They can only do basic things like fishing and laundry and things like that. If they make any money, the women control it. It's like the 50s, but reversed. But reversed. So yeah, men are the lesser citizens. And this is the highest um, literacy rate in all of um, Midgard, 25%. But okay. even a lot of the women decide to just, they're famed for being archers. They're, the parents just have the girls learn archery and, 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 and fighting more than learning, but they're still very learned. Um, and basically, I think something in the book specifically says, like, you know, it's a female run country because when you look at the world and look what men have done, why would you ever let them learn how to read or have weapons? Um, Amen. So I, I love it. It's great. Hashtag 2020. Do you want to uh, scroll out a little bit and just show more from Morgau to Paranalia on the Midgard map? Um, so basically, he says, I want this girl as my next bride. I want to fuck her to death. That's what's going to happen. So you guys are going to go get her for me. So yeah, so Morgav and Duresh, if you want to point at it in the green. Um, and then Clarsaya is basically where the hand is on the cursor right now um, in this Paranalia section on the red state, um, southeasterly of Morgav. So that's Morgav. And then yeah, Clarsaya is lower. Um, I don't see it live, so I'm probably telling you what to do. Five seconds too late. Um, but uh, they have to go all the way through there. And in the area where it says Black Hills, if you want to turn the political boundaries off for a second, um, is, uh, well, we don't even need to get to the Margrave yet. So they were told to go do that, that they had an escort um, to, um, to get to Bratislaw. And then from Bratislaw, they were going to go down um, through the Margrave to Clarsaya. They met a wizard named Timbor, and Timbor is like the court wizard for Rojan, but hates Rojan, but the king, Lucan, likes him. So Timbor, as the party was leaving, basically said, hey, guys, listen, if you're going to go that way anyway, why don't you go this way? And what I want you to do is find some blood magic items for me while you're basically it's like a side quest while you're doing the main quest. And if you find anything cool, I'll buy it from you. Sound good? And everyone was like, cool, sounds good. And he's like, all right, I have a contact you know, at the beginning of this river, right on the way down to Margrave, 
that'll help you go that way. So they say, okay, they head out. Jason, go to two eight. Should I message you in Discord, Jason? Didn't Tambor kind of have like a beat to beat him? Just say it out loud. Oh yeah, Tambor and, and beat him had known and knew each other as as mage users and um, as magic users and yeah. had, a ve- had a very fun, contentious- yeah. Beat him was, came, came into his this own. Is a, this will yeah. be a picture of- um, Two eight? Tambor and beat him. Two eight. All right, I got it. Because his face like scrunches up and the way Andy's voice gets is so mm, good. Yeah. And- uh, yeah, there yeah, we go. That's Timber and, and beat him. <laughs> if one of your mage users was skilled enough, um, and then beat him, and she's like, mm, I had to. Um, go to two nine. So yeah, this is gonna take like. Five. I don't know what this is for. I think it. I don't know if maybe this was the day you had the mask or something. And Sam, this is before the Mandalorian came out, and you kind of had the baby, the baby Yoda, baby beat him market cornered. If we only knew. I real man, I should have done merchandise man. sooner. Yeah. Well, man, it's very lone wolf and cub. So, <laughs> um, so they left uh, Hanksburg on the way to um, the Temple of Opera Stala. Um, did did the did the uh, ambush happen before the temple or after the temple? It was after the temple. So they went to the Temple of Opera Stala, which is like the main big blood sister temple. Yeah. Um, they stayed there. Um, they met uh, Aleshka of the Chalice. She's one of the like highest higher ups in the church, and she proceeded to basically just beat the hell out of Cordelia emotionally for being a bad blood sister. Um, a lot of sarcasm, a lot of uh, it was great. I loved it. I'm so glad that you enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed think- playing that. It was really great. Before um, we went there, Ryan, you did a cool thing where you kind of allowed each player to kind of meet with you one on one, and you had like a whole oh, list, in a bathroom, a list of goodies. And I was oh, like, "Oh, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. now it's getting it real. We're in go. the bathroom." Go to two yeah. seven. <laughs> yeah. So basically, they were allowed to take one magic item, and they could pick an item or a weapon. Uh, most of the people took weapons. Um, I think Beatum took an item, mm-hmm. um, and then all of the weapons were marked with Rojan's sigil, which was basically yeah. It's basically like a bullseye. It's it's black and there's like a red. Yeah, choose one. Um, there's a red. It's like circle with a cross. Um, you know, almost like a bullseye through it. Um, on the hilts of all the weapons and stuff. Um, so uh, everyone was marked basically with Rogian symbols, yeah. which which came back later. Yeah. Um. So they got to Apristala. They when they got to their rooms. So Morena is a goddess of blood and lust. So it's basically a lot of, of blood and sex. So all the rooms had chests full of S and M gear um, and little little um, altars to Morena. Um, Dre, actually, at some point I don't remember why, um, kind of hit it off with got, the lesson. I think yeah. oh. sis, I think yeah. I'll call, yeah. She, yeah, she kind of put the moves on Dre, and Aleska. Dre oh, responded to it. Very, very well. And then when um, when uh, Aleshka um, figured out that Dre wasn't a man, as he was pretending to be, that he was a woman, he was. she was still super down. She, she was so, scared, though. Yeah, Dre was like, up. this is it. Yeah, Dre got it handed to him, her, them, um, and enjoyed it very much. Um, uh, you rolled for... for um, how well you did too, and you did okay. Better the second. Yeah, it gave day, it gave Dre, I think, like advantage for like three days. Yes, like you got to good. drink. So after you had sex with her, the second time you actually satisfied her, and <laughs> she let you drink from a chalice, the chalice, Sorry, Mom. Aleshka of the chalice, um, and it gave you advantage on ability checks for three days. This all happened in a private chat. We were like. You guys, we were at the table, and you guys were like in a Discord. Well, there, there was, there was, because yeah. like, it was kind of subtle, but like there was kind of some with tongue taker, like kind of some bro stuff. We knew that something was going Dre on, didn't but respond we did not to. know yeah. exactly what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that was Aleska. You guys left. We knew what there. was going on, but we didn't get deets. No, yeah, because at the time Wait, I also looted at the at the foot of my bed. Yeah, because we yeah. all stayed there. The S and M is gear, a trunk, yeah. and inside the trunk, which came was in handy, a bunch of random S and M gear, ball gags, which we use big for time. Things later. We'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. So, I so the fact that you stole the whole chest, just cause, yeah, and it, and it worked great. Yeah. So um, after you guys Ooh. left, um, uh, it was I believe it was episode four out of thirty. We only have a little bit to go. 
Um, yeah, my numbering's really off. Yeah, you um, you left on the way with Captain Rain, who was one of the um, who was oh. one of the uh, uh, um, what Sorry, are I didn't the Knights hear you, of Morgau called? What were they called? Should ghost I message night. you so I don't have to yeah. talk over? He was a ghost night. No, just talk over me. That's fine. Just tell what number? Three two. Yeah, just talk over me. That's fine. Um, so then, um, as you were uh, going, <laughs> um to uh, head to Bratislore, um, which is the capital of the kingdom in the south. Um, you were ambushed by these little kids that were these warped, like, yeah. just Three, terrible little creatures. They killed half the ghost knights. They dragged the rest into the woods. They were hooting and hollering. They were deformed as hell. And I don't know if you guys caught up on this, but this is actually based on the story of Sonny Bean. It's an Irish English yeah. folklore. Um, it was a cannibal family that was um, ambushing people on the road and then would take them back to this cave that the mouth for most of the day was underwater. So they weren't found for a long time. And they just basically interbred into these like terrible, disgusting cannibal, like incest creatures um, until they were caught and killed. Um, so you guys were basically attacked by cannibal incest babies um and then shout followed... out to cameron yeah oh yeah oh. Cam cameron was, was amazing by, uh, yep. or ritter no not rain, ritter was the other guy rain, rain was, was played by cam yeah, was our was first guest by, ever yeah rain was played was by this, cameron and then was what i did baby leaf? what's up was this the beginning of andy's baby leaf like he i think a... it was around no close but not no it was episode seven wait yeah okay. i have because yes it's called bye bye kind of yeah so basically the group May I really quick? I think that's brilliant. Any other DMs out there watching? Yeah. Uh, bringing in uh, for key roles, bringing in guest players is brilliant. So good. I oh, I love, I love it. I love it. I mean, uh, the problem so now fun. is I don't run the uh, I don't run the um, the OBS while we're streaming. Jason, our our wonderful player here, does for both this and Miss Midgard. So if I'm gonna have a secret character, he's gonna have to know, and we'd have to set up a whole separate window. <laughs> um, that we'd have to like click on to for like guest players, which we might do in the future. Um, Jason doesn't meta. Yeah. He's well, good. the good thing is, never, never. Well, he oh, doesn't no, need to know. Uh, no, not class. at all. I, I um, would totally trust you with that. <laughs> um, the um, so well, the good thing is, in both windows, eventually we'll have the little art box, and all we have to do is have another zoom window um, uh, there, and then and just hide it. And then you can just turn it on and it'll pop right over top of it. So we could always do that. Anyway. Oh, we do three, three. I'm just some of these like aren't really story related. So I'm just going to have Jason show them while you keep talking. Okay. Sorry. Oh, so God, by the way, a recurring theme. So yeah. while we're getting ambushed <laughs> by these uh, incest pituitary gland freak show people, um, I was kind of pissed because our escorts decided we came. It was a ravine. It was obviously an ambush site. No, yeah. like, well, let's just go. So I was mad after the ambush at our escorts for their incompetence, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, they were terrible. They were punished. Yeah. Um, well, they all died. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me shrink some windows down. I got too much stuff going on. I don't want to see everybody. And Two, three, seven. The beat him, Bjorn. Yeah, definitely Victor was inspired by Tongue Taker. And oh, for sure. Um, so, well, and, and the way that I had, when we did an in-person game, the way I had Cam come in, oh yeah, we'll get there. We're not quite there yet. Um, oh, we're not there? Okay. The yeah. kids were later than this. That's why I got confused. Okay, do... No, wait, wait, wait. The kids were prior to this because... Oh, maybe this... I should draw them then. Yeah. So you already showed the kids. Yeah, but that drawing came later. This is so when you guys assumed. are speaking towards the cave. Okay. Yeah. So you once I like Cordelia is just then. striking random poses behind Cutter. Yeah. That's so Cameron, I actually had wait, the first time I did this. I did this multiple times. I had Cameron waiting outside the door, like for I don't know how long, with a prepared line, so that when I was like, "Well, Captain Rame says." Okay. Then do three two. He bursts in the door and delivers a line before like sitting down at the table and like, okay. you know, continuing on. 
um, and introducing himself as, as going to be the so character character. That was so fun. Because this is so the good. line he said when he walked in, and I just was, it was, it's so fun when it just this yeah. really grand surprise. So entrance. he actually burst open the door and was like, we have to find my men. And everyone was He's like, so whoa, pompous. Cameron, oh, it was, it was really cool. So I'm going to try to clip through this a little quicker. <laughs> okay. Um, but keep, keep, keep. And I think he had a briefcase because that's he what did. he kept all his shit in. So he, he had a backgammon. A backgammon. Backgammon. That's what it was. I was like, yeah. what? I was like, I'm like, like, oh, Cam's here. Cool. Yeah. What's Cam doing here? Nope. So then um, the group followed um, the people in. That's the one that you were just having. Um, Cutter was stealthily moving. Um, Cordelia was trying to stealth behind and failed at one point. No, um, I didn't. Somebody failed. I and think then Jason did. The uh, the guards at the cave mouth banged on a we can find uh, out. banged uh, on three, a drum six. Three, six. and alerted everyone in the cave. Yeah, you were following behind after it told you to stay. Um, and then everyone, you know, in the all the cannibals ran into the cave. And then ambushed you guys slowly. Yeah, that's the cave mouth. Um, oh, that was when Dre was trying to use his cat as a familiar over and over and over again, even though it was a weapon. To lure, to lure them out. Yeah. Um, and then they went through the cave. They were attacked by some cannibal children. They got into the main cave area in the back, and the dad was there. Um, I can't remember his name, and it's not here. Um, you guys, in the back corner of the room was just like meat hanging on chains. Um, after you guys fought for a while, he hid in there, was like striking from there. Um, but you guys eventually beat him and then went down into the bottom area where one of the, oh, prior to that, actually, you had found a couple of the soldiers um, with their heads just on stakes outside of the front right. of the cave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the but then when you went into the base, to the lower area of the cave, there was another soldier down there that was like, help me, help me. Um, so you guys like set him free and started looting. But after you set him free and started looting, it actually turned from a, um, it actually turned from a soldier into a hag. Um, yeah. And the hag attacked the party. Uh, be behind the DM screen, CR wise for that, it was super bad. You guys, I didn't have, I should have had another one of the kids run down or something. So there were some ads. But you guys wrecked her super quick. I left her up for like another turn or but two. But the hag like be pulled a Skeletor, easy. right? It was all, hmm, yeah. yeah, see ya, right? Yeah, Get well, into she, a mirror, pulled out, yeah. she pulled out a magic mirror, smashed it, went ethereal, <laughs> exactly, and left. Exactly, a Skeletor, So she's yeah. still out there. Her name was Black <laughs> Agnes. Yeah, um, a Black and Agnes. The whole yeah, you gave Cam is, a bunch uh... of stuff to tell us, and then oh, we yeah. ignored him. I gave Cameron a bunch of like, like written lines talking about like the lore of these people like oh these are the clan of the black hand that's what they were called yeah, because they yeah. all had these like black hands burnt into their faces and it ended up being agnes that did it i gave him like all these lines like when this happens read this little bit of flavor text when this happens read this little bit of flavor text um and he just didn't um or i didn't give him the signal for we wouldn't it have listened. or whatever we wouldn't no, listen there's no listen. way and we wouldn't listen at one I'm... point he i did give him a signal that was like i texted him actually through discord and yeah. was like at least read this and you guys were like listen why are you fucking talking we're in a forest and he was like well fine fuck you guys then and wasn't sam always messing with you like sam was like and what are all their names and like you'd have to name like every soldier oh and my god yeah oh go to, go to three nine so then there was ritter, ritter. so yes yep. as they were going through ritter was mvp not Captain Rain. Um, yeah. And he was just wrecking shit. Um, but eventually he died. Yeah. Ritter. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember. Ritter, he was always you like, take the lead. I, yeah, because yeah. Captain Rain was a very kind of like pompous kind of douche. And he He's was a just douche. like, we <laughs> will go forth, but Ritter, you yeah. lead. Ritter um, was awesome. And Ritter was yeah. wrecking shit. He was doing a great job, but he died. Um, <laughs> so after they fought Black Agnes, they um, were leaving... Was was Rain there for the zombie fight, or did you guys kill him first? No, he was he was there. Yeah. No, so the, no, he we killed him because Alan died, Greyrock that. died, Roth died. I'm pretty sure Ritter killed, finally gets. I killed it. him before we left the cave. And then Tongue Taker has the Prior dead sword. To the zombies or or after the zombies? After zombies we rested. After. Yeah. yeah, we rested down there, and they killed him. So basically, um, uh, Rain was like, "Hey, before we left the cave." No, I thought I thought. Cause, Ritter, cause, no, because listen, because Rain was all like, like when the zombies finally got killed, he was like so wrecked that they told you guys what was up, right? 
So I've got it, I've got it right here. So so what happens is uh, Tongue Taker basically figures out that that Ritter can get us in trouble because because we've kind of fucked with other guys. But is that before or after the zombies? It's it's kind of before the zombies. It was before because like, we tried to okay. leave. Because we try to leave Rain, and the Rain zombies come at us. Says Rain basically says, "Listen, you guys even know what you're fucking doing. You're gonna kidnap someone who's basically a princess of Clarsaya. You're gonna start a war. And when you go to yeah. Bratislaw, marked with with um, the weapons from Rodion. If you tell anyone that, or if I tell anyone that, they're gonna kill you. This is basically yeah. just Rogen fucking with Lucan because they're vampires and live forever, you know? So yeah. Cutter came out wearing Ritter's face. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was and my then, uh, Yeah. Yep. And then so and then Tongue Taker kills a uh, Tongue Taker and Beatem both go to kill Rain at the same time. Cordelia's pissed because she wanted to bang him. And then, um, and Beat then him the party says, says he died because he was right. Yeah, nice. The party then um, had like a really nice RP moment. One of the first really good like party bonding moments after that. Um, and then went to leave the cave. But after all of that noise, um, one of the things I forgot to say was the forest that they had to go through to get to the cave in the first place was full of zombies and skeletons that were put there and by traps. the local lord. Yeah, um, Lord Fandoran, um, who was like a necromancer to keep the dwarves on the other side of the forest from coming through. When they got to the edge of the cave mouth, they realized that they had, with all of their noise, brought all of the zombies from the entire forest. It was like a, it was like a horde of 100 zombies, um, at least, and actually made a horde mechanic for it. Um, we could throw that up into the into the um, character info sheet of the Dark Kingdoms page at some point. But basically, every person who was touching the horde got a multi attack by the horde. One to try to drag them down, grapple them, and one to hit them. Um, and basically, they tried to fight for a little bit, couldn't. Um, Cordelia started to go down, ended up um, on the ground. Um, with um with just her foot sticking up in the air and like one hit left before she was gonna die cutter had run beat him had run dre ran everybody ran and then tongue taker who was kind of at that time had been kind of contentious with cordelia ran back grabbed her and tried to pull her out the horde got an opportunity attack against cordelia which would have knocked her unconscious which means Tongue Taker would have had to run because there's no way he could carry her and still get farther away from the Horde. The Horde, I have a picture of it somewhere on my phone, rolled a nat one on its opportunity attack against her. Tongue Taker was able to pull her out and able to drag her far enough away that she could get up and run away from the Horde. They, uh, there was a couple of spots where they fought the Horde for a little while. They took some out with some arrows and stuff. Basically, the Horde kept getting smaller and smaller. I know Beatum was doing some lightning spells and stuff. And as they finally got back into the room where the cannibal dad was, um, I, I, know, I remember Jason specifically being like, fuck it, like we're dead. Like, I'm not, I'm not even hiding. I don't give a shit. We're fucking dead. Who cares? But at that point, the Horde had broken up enough that I had made them individual zombies. Um, and the players figured that out once they hit one. And I was like, oh, like, they're individuals at this point, basically. I can't remember what I said. But they um, they were able to wipe them out and, again, had a really great character moment where they were all like, man, we should have fucking died. And it was one of the funnest sessions I've ever run in my entire life. And after that session, I started recording um, audio for every session after. And I'm, I'm so sad that I missed that first one. That was a great session. It was a great session. And, and also, too, was, I was glad I was able to save Cordelia because we had had a contentious moment of few minutes beforehand when I killed I, Captain Rain because yep. you were totally against that. That's what it was. When and I, I tried to through. use yeah. my damn peer power on you. Yeah. Oh, and, shit, that's and, right. and it worked. You tried to charm him. Well, no, well, because that gives me it. I that advantage. like damn pure thing gives me advantage on the persuasion roll. Yes. And I just it was I remember because I rolled a nat one on the persuasion roll, but I had a plus I think a six to persuasion, so I got a seven. And then your roll, your contested roll was a six total, but it, <laughs> right. that, that like didn't mean I instantly won. So like my argument was really compelling, but you killed him anyway. But I you knew that I charmed you after that. 
Yeah, which makes me angry once it wears off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so for an hour, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, answer. so you were able to defeat the zombies. You eventually made your way to Bratislaw. Um, and um, why don't, right before we start Bratislaw, why don't we just go on break for just like three minutes? Okay. Thanks everybody who's here for watching yes, this. Thank That's you so much. Yeah. Uh, and we'll be right back.
All right, and we're back. Um, thank you for sticking around. We will pick up where we left off. Um, the group reminded me of a couple of things. Oh, funny for you guys, especially with the mute real quick. So when I was doing my prep stream last night, I came back from my break and guess what I forgot to do? Unmute. For like four minutes until someone was eventually like, hey, so uh, we can't hear you. Um, so I was like, Fuck. Um, anyway. So a couple of things I missed while we were, um, what, what, what is, uh, what are we just talking about? Who, who did you guys see? You saw a guy in the woods? Dude. In a, it, yeah. it just, you, you would always allude to a black hooded figure. Four, four. A black hooded figure. You, yes. Because the Lord of Fandoran had like little necromancer dudes that were just like watching you like that, like watch the forest. So there was a guy and you just said, Sam was like, you know, how big is he? I saw him. I did the yeah. check to see him. And I said he's about dude sized. And then you were basically I was like, like I was like metric dudes or imperial dudes. And I said it's one metric dude. Um, so that is a unit of measurement. We've been measuring then, ever since. Yeah. And that's how we measure everything from henceforth. <laughs> so if you hear us talking about one metric dude or well, actually if you if Jason, if you skip ahead to five dash three, um, I have a very helpful um, scale for reference oh. of how tall some <laughs> characters are dudes oh good, oh, good. <laughs> so just for reference tongue taker is yes. one that has dudes the yeah. hooded figure was one dude and beat him as a half dude as a half a dude metric right. dudes, not a metric dudes. Perfect. this is all in metric because midgard is is <laughs> isn't behind like america <laughs> right um exactly. And then what was the other thing that you said we missed? Oh, all of our, our plan, go to 4-1. It's our said, it's our plan for how we were going to oh, beat him. He started there. that yeah, in the yeah, cave. Yeah. He started that plan. Oh, yeah, you just started that in the cave. So basically, you wrote travel as a freak show, but it's travel, you wanted to travel as a circus. Yes. With Tongue Taker as a strong man in a leotard. Well, yeah, hold beat on, him. hold on. Yeah, I think I used I the word freak show because Ryan, I think you said, you just goes, yeah, you guys are a fucking freak anyway. show or something like that. Well, beat him <laughs> wanted to have a traveling wagon that had a stage and you guys actually <laughs> yeah. paid to have a wagon built with a stage in it. Yeah. Yep. Go to 4-7. So Tongue Taker and Cordelia went clothes shopping. Yeah. He shows up in a long pajama shirt. Oh, uh, great. <laughs> Yeah, he wanted to be a strong. Tongue Taker was the strong man, and Cordelia was going to be a dancer. Oh, and Dre got and like a you brown. You guys went to the outfit. sex shop in yeah. Bratislava like for hoops. For hoops. For hoops. And the we place that you could hoops. find the hoops was the sex shop. Um, funny, funny, random side story. That character was actually modeled after, and um, the name was chosen by one of my coworkers at work because I was talking to her about it. Lynetta. And I was like, yeah. So the, the, the person who I will remain nameless, just in case you ever listen oh. to this, her middle name is, no, her middle name is Lynn. Okay. So I call the character Lynetta, but I won't say her first or last name. Yeah, um, at the Exquisite Shackles. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, but the Exquisite Shackles, because um, I was trying, because when, when Cobalt Press put out that map uh, for Bratis or the capital in the Midgard book, um, they labeled everything, but didn't give descriptions of any of the places. So I had to fill in all of the places on the map and for me, Exquisite Shackles just felt like a sex shop. Um, so that's where you guys got hoops for your thing. So um, Tongue Taker was going to be a strong man in a leotard. Um, yeah, you were going to be a dancer. Cutter was going to be the five. bouncer. Yeah. yeah I got and four. and Beatum was going to be like a fortune teller. And you guys five, were going to have four. a traveling wagon. Yeah. And, and because I, basically... Really... Cutter was going to be nothing. Yeah, he was gonna have to, like the money. He was gonna have no part of that. Crap. He's basically, <laughs> you know what I mean? All these guys are trying to be all <laughs> chummy and create this cheese ball yeah. fellowship. Like they just it took them a while to kind of ease into it. Get yeah. into the mission. <laughs> but but basically, once they left Morgau and Duresh, you know, uh, they were gonna have to switch to a daytime schedule because you guys were all pretty much night lifers, um, and also. Um, you would have all been super out of place. A trollkin, a gnome, and in this world, gnomes are evil as fuck. Like, they, they live in a kingdom, Nimheim, that is protected by the devils of the Eleven Hells because they sold their collective souls to them to protect them from Baba Yaga because they broke a deal with the, the witch, the hag queen, basically, Baba Yaga, who even God's here. Um, so gnomes are evil as fuck in this world. Um, Jason, can you go to 414? This is my favorite drawing that I've ever... Ever, ever done. It's after we all bonded in the tavern. And, and yeah, so, 
And Cordelia, you had a great quote. So you, you said you, you bring a, a beer over to Tongue Taker or maybe two and you say, here you go, my slightly larger than dude sized dude. And it's like the first time you were nice to him. And then yeah. he just goes, he takes the drink, he goes, stay out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> I have one where it's, it's in one of those, like, it's Cordelia Before, saying, I won't favorite, use my soup. I'm sorry, my favorite part of this picture is Cutter, like, creeping into Freya. <laughs> no, I think we decided, I think me and Jason decided that right. Cutter, we all moved, like, all of the other characters yeah. moved yeah. in front of Cutter that to try happens. to take the picture. Yeah, well, that and, was me getting the fuck out of there and going, he's yeah, always he, in the, the corner. Line, he's and she just out. caught it right at that moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're on mute, Eric. Or, uh, Ryan. Fucking hell. So you're not creeping in. <laughs> I cast. No, yeah, no, he's I'm, trying I'm to walking out. away and I'm like, God damn it, here are these fuckers with their happy anime eyes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so let's move on. Um, okay. Poet's Corner. I had some really, really good. I had some really, really good. Um, you guys talked to a, a street. Um, a street performer who had um, things to say to you. Uh, I don't think it was this one. Oh, was that the like slam poet who was? It was a slam us? poet. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find some of the slam poetry after Agnes, Radis lore, titles, people. My bard limericks, the slam poetry in. Uh, a nymph, one of Peace's proponents, never fights but seduces opponents. Their violence she quells as if using a spell. You should see her material components. Um, where was the beat? Where I know there's a dwarf one. Yeah, there was. I thought there, there was once one. was a gnome of yore who spent all his coin on a whore. He chased her around with his trousers pulled down and his cock bouncing off of the floor. That's what he said to beat him. And my favorite one was was a, right. was a shadow fay named yeah. Alif, who caused the farmers much grief. To the cows he would run, cut their legs off for fun, and say, "Look, I've invented ground beef." Mm. Great, great, great. Uh, I once. I remember giving beat him. Yeah, I once crossed paths with the witch. Yeah, him a lot of uh, grief over. Oh yeah, you did talk about him. His dick dragging on the ground the whole time. Dong but, on the floor. Yeah, was that the his, punk, his troll kid yeah. name? Yeah, yeah. Dong bounces on the floor, off yeah. the floor. Bounces. That's what it is. Um, so you made your way through Poets Corner because when you got to Bratislaw, there was a um, a festival going on because what the actual prince of Daresh um, loves poetry and and um, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So while you're there. Um, Beatum gets kidnapped because Andy, our wonderful, well, you can see the picture right there. Um, he had that, um, his child. Um, and, uh, so he had to, he had he to a little piece, help from his wife. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, he had to piece out of the game for a little bit. So the way I, I fashion that is, um, in Beatum's backstory, there's this character named Tolkien Grimm, who is, uh, one of his opponents. Um, so while they were sleeping in a tavern, Tolkien Grimm actually ambushed them. Actually, prior to that, when he went to a magic shop, um, Tolkien Grimm was actually um, the um, owner of the magic shop in disguise and actually gave um, Beatum a cursed scroll. So then Tolkien Grimm showed up while Beatum was sleeping later um, and Beatum had already tried to read from the scroll and nothing happened. So when he tried to um, use magic later, he couldn't. Tokigrim chased him down, dropped a fireball, not firebolt, fireball, right in the middle of Bloodthorn Tavern. Yeah. Um, knocked beat him unconscious, stuffed him in a bag of holding, and disappeared. And the entire party, basically, I think one, I think maybe um, Dre was the only one that saw it happen, and yeah. he just bounced. Um, he saw it through the cat's eyes. purely yeah. for IRL purposes. Beatum never gets caught. <laughs> <laughs> um, so from there, um, oh, while you guys were at the Temple of Apristala, Aleshka had actually asked you to also check out the Blood Vaults. There was a sister yeah. there named Alcava that they hadn't heard from in a while. The Blood Vaults are an area where they actually collect blood from people, um, like a big blood bank, um, and use it later. But she had figured out a way to draw magic from that. So they went to the Blood Vaults. 
And finally, we get to Jess, Daryana, as they oh, as they peeked up this hill to get to the blood vaults. They saw this young or this uh, female figure fighting six, an seven. fighting an ogre, um, and uh, stepped in to help her. Um, and after they had defeated this zombie ogre, um, they met Daryana Bloodrite, which is yes. That was her first thing, because because Jess also got to walk inside. Yes. I um, I wish we had put her. I wish we'd put your guys' character art and stuff too up. So the 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 composition Jess sent me of Daryana is just freaking awesome. But Daryana has this ruby embedded in her chest with like the flesh around it not quite healing. Um, not gonna talk about what it is, but it's there, um, and that's what you know it is on the drawing. And actually. I think was it the first time you showed up in person? Yeah. You actually had your full face makeup, yeah! and you actually had, yeah. um, you actually had a ruby embedded in your chest in real life in person. I don't know yeah. if we ever got a picture of that, but if we didn't, that's a terrible um, a miss on our part. It, it was crazy because it was our second guest, and it just kept elevating. Like Cameron was amazing, and then Jess was amazing. Like the, yeah. her entrance was spectacular. I can't remember what did you is that what you said? That's yeah, that's what she said. said. Yeah, in. I always write down what the person yeah. said. Are I'm you gonna help me? Up or not? Yeah. Oh, oh god. Was, and you got inspiration and right also, out the gate. What um, one of the best lines ever was my eyes are up here. Go to yeah. six eight. <laughs> I have a drawing of it. Uh, yeah. uh, I think it's Cordelia think, that was like yeah, staring, no, Cordelia at does. staring at my what, gem. What, yeah. is, what is it, Sam? Six eight. Six eight. So, yeah, and then I just immediately got inspiration. The second she walked in the door, yeah. Cordelia was like immediately like infatuated with Jet, with Dariana, because Dariana is just like beautiful. I mean, I don't know how old she is, but I picture her as like not mature looking and like she's 50, but like she, she's a woman. And Cordelia is like a teenage girl, basically. So she's obsessed with Dariana in the beginning. And she's just like staring at this ruby in Daryana's chest, and Daryana delivers the line. Um, and it was just one of the, I think it's one of the best lines of the entire campaign so far, and it's amazing. And Ryan, um, you, you didn't intend for her to, to be part of the party, which we thought was oh, like the worst well, idea ever. Yeah, well, so after, we'll get there. Um, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, at the time, Jess was, I asked her to be like a stand-in character to fill out the party while um, Andy was on vacation, well, not vacation, while Andy was on paternity leave. Um, from work and us. Um, <laughs> Tongue Taker takes a piss, blood pudding kills Dre. Oh yeah, you pissed out the door. So basically when they go into the blood vaults- Because they... Eric wasn't there for that session. He so really oh, oh that's right. Yeah. Eric yeah. Was Tongue Taker always session. saves Dre. Yeah, so, so Tongue Taker went outside to take a piss and was just gone for a while. Um, they walked in, fought some zombies, they got farther in. They found um, these two, they fought a couple things. They found these two vaults, one with um, with men in it. Oh, and we had another guest. We had um, Justin come in and he played um, someone who was kidnapped from the local that's, village. That's way late, that's later. Oh, wait, no. Dre wait. dies first. No. Yeah. Because uh, then Matt Drew missed the saying... next session and we had Justin play. <laughs> and then Andy and not come back together. Sure. The drawings yep. are in order. So, we'll so say that. Dre but did prior to that, Justin. I don't. I forgot. When you guys go through the local town, um, yeah. there's a, a like a grandmotherly woman who talks oh, shit to babushka. Cordelia. Yeah, a babushka uh. talks shit to Cordelia. Yeah. Um, asks, basically says, "Hey, if your adventures come help us," um, and you guys are like, "We're gonna do what we want to do." And then um, the babushka yeah. to tongue taker was basically like, like "So more, are you I gonna?" Yeah. Yeah, are you gonna are you gonna um, you know put your wagon here, or, or what are you gonna do with it? Do you need someone to help you? And you're like, fuck that! Drove the wagon to the to the pathway that led up to the blood vault and set the wagon on fire. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so. I burned it down because fuck her. Exactly, <laughs> and that's what you said too. Yeah. <laughs> Evil yeah. campaign. Um. Or Volia. So the, then, the yeah. So you went into the blood vaults. Um, you, we did have another guest, Justin, who um, basically uh, when Dre, they opened Dre up. Dre dies first. 
he doesn't. So, so I have a drawing. I yeah, but I know what room Justin was in, and that room yeah. is the very first room you go into. Because because Dre made, Dre hugs the person that was next to. I have that. Justin. And mm -hmm. Cordelia makes Tongue Taker promise not to talk before he kills people next time. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, yeah. there was a thing that happened when you went into the female area because the men and women were separated. Um, Dre just decided to open the door, not checking it, not anything. And he, but you had heard these, you know, this girl screaming, let me out, let me out, let me out. The second you open the door, whack, gets slapped across the face. From one point. One HP of damage, and this will come back in a moment. Um, then, as they fought some blood zombies, um, they found some secret passages, they did some things, they walked down this area that had all these like giant um, urns. And after they had left an area, um, Daryana and Cordelia ran by. Dre ran by after, but at that a point, seven, this, eight. yeah, this blood ooze had. Um, oh, if you have one of those beer cans ready, you should grab one of those. If not, I'll get mine from downstairs. I got um, it. Uh, Dre uh, was caught by the blood ooze, who actually caught him by surprise as he ran by. I've never seen this picture. Um. And the Blood Ooze uh, had a surprise attack against him and critted on Dre. And the total crit damage was just enough to do all of his HP plus his normal HP to insta-kill him by one hit point. And we'll talk about that Discord one too. hit point. Yeah. Oh, doesn't really do it justice. Talk about but... that one hit point. Oh, yeah, the one hit point was from the woman that slapped him earlier. Yeah, he just said that. But yeah, oh, the, sorry. um, oh, no worries. The, um, so he died by literally one hit point to this ooze. Um, and then was just gone for a couple weeks after that. But I know after some other stuff happened, um, you guys came back and you picked up Dre's, like, the blood ooze basically sucked all the blood and juices out of the body. So you came back, grabbed the body and grabbed all of his stuff. I know, and then Dre also had this coin he would flip to decide what he was gonna do. So we'll come back to that. Um, and it's then, also the beginning of that card mechanic, Ryan, because you it all started where I passed the stealth check. Yeah. And then you oh, used the card against me. I used me. a bad card against Correct. you. And like it should have never happened. Yeah. yeah, but that made you fail and then you That's died perfect. by one hit point because of your poor decision <laughs> earlier. Well, and, um, and not disengaging. Yeah. So then we eight get two. to eight two is to, um, Yeah, there's an area where you guys fight um, a basically wraith infested um, gear forge, like war forged. Because um, you go into this room and there are all these like hanging tubes, and inside the tube is a person, and in the tube are are um, spikes that are bleeding that person down into. Um, uh, like a like a divot in the ground and that's magically disappearing um and then you guys enter into the main blood vault oh, area before we get there uh go to jason go to eight eight that's we while we were in that room um so justin's character was just like a dude who was part of this village and he was just like had the most generic stats and so for this all of us are doing like tongue taker was like being super racist against dwarves i used my dampier thing to kill somebody to get a hit die back to, by sucking yep. their blood dariana was like playing in a pit like a puddle of blood and cutter was changing faces out and we were all doing this and justin's character was just like what the fuck that that i feel like that entire scene right there is kind of really really depicts the group in general so there was like eight hanging things um uh these eight hanging like uh little prison cells kind of with that are bleeding these people two people were already dead there was three you could have saved you saved two of them um one was close to death that's the one that you bit the one that died like you just said cut her cut the face off of that divot Doriana was playing in the blood and then yeah tongue taker was just talking so much shit um and i feel like basically after you finish a battle most people are like oh let's loot and help people and our group was like, let's eat people, cut off their faces, play in blood. And I guess these two people are alive enough that we should probably take them back with us or else they'll tell on us. I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
but yeah, and and Justin did such a great job. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you go into the main Blood Bowl, and this is one of my favorite combats ever, but there was some discontent. Basically, <laughs> when they go into this room, it's this huge room, there's these four giant urns that are like 15 feet high stone urns. But prior to that, you go into this, this area, and it's all bones, and then there's some steps and then the the room's main floor and then at the far end of the wall was this like um statue of morena and this um altar with like blood like kind of burbling through it so they uh, get attacked by skeletons on the lower level that's like phase one they beat those and then as soon as they step on the steps each of these urns spits out a blood zombie and justin recognizes at one point that one of the blood zombies is his brother and that's the reason Justin had actually yeah. come to the vault in the first place was to find his brother. So we ended up actually killing his brother. And then at one point, Tongue Taker, this is, I will say this is partially my fault and partially the player's faults. <laughs> um, he, Tongue Taker tried to tip over one of the 15 foot high solid like stone urns. Like the DC would have, was like 35, never gonna happen my failure at that point was even letting a roll happen at all because tongue taker rolled so well i think he got like a 22 or something and then i said the urn didn't move so the players were like well then <laughs> fuck it the urns don't do anything they don't do anything fine <laughs> um and never attack the urns again but the urns were blasting this magic like lightning at sister alcava the priestess in this thing fueling her Fueling her such that each urn would give her 25 extra hit points, an extra um, turn each round, um, and an extra point of AC, each one individually. So if you if you break one urn, she loses 25 hit points, a point of AC, and one action per, per round. So she got four extra actions, 100 extra hit points, and plus four to AC. And the party never again tried to break the urns, even though I've listened to it again. Every turn I was like, and the magic surrounding the urns is arcing towards her, fueling her well, more. Well, hindsight. Oh yeah, it's gonna seem yeah, super yeah. obvious. And what so I long story yeah. short. Well, I, mean, I, long story short. Like, I almost feel like, you know, maybe when Tongue Taker was trying to move it, you may be like, you know, you can't budge it, but you do notice. What, how else was I supposed to say you notice no, magic I, I know. Well, arcing I, from well, it? Well, I think, well, I think like we assume like they're indestructible, right? Because yes. I think logically, I, we two things first I could have done. Push them. Yeah. Two things I could have done. Well, I mean, again, if you saw this thing, you wouldn't try to tip it over. It's 15 feet high, 10 feet around, stone urn. Like it's it's a it's a piece of the world. Like you can't you can't tip this thing over. It's enormous. But I think like what I should have done. Thought, well, we can't even yeah. smash it either, right? Like, no one even tried to smash it. No one even hit it. No one even hit it with a spell. No one did anything. What I should do. One of two things I could have done was. Not let you roll for it. Say it's too big to push it. You can hit it if you want. Or I should have let it like crack a little bit when he tried to tip it over. In retrospect, that's what I would have done. And I feel like that would have been enough of a symbol to you guys that, hey, you do something different. But I kept trying. Yeah. We still be here. Okay, no. Everybody went down. Tongue Taker went down multiple yeah. times. Cordelia went down multiple times. Justin died. Um. And the very last, the very, very last oh, shot. I, I, yeah, we're, we're, I think I was making death saves. You were up I and was down. Making, I stabilized. Oh, yeah. The very last thing that happened was Jason was being like, well, I'm going to have to run. And I was like, well, you can run as a bonus action. So why don't you get one more hit in? Um, and a little bit I behind three, the- I had three hit points left. Yeah, a little bit behind yeah, the yeah. DM screens. What I was like, if he leaves, the whole party's dead and campaign's over. I mean, that's what I was thinking. So well, here's- Here's a I little bit behind the DM screen. You hit her. Um, and I was like, I don't, as long as, because also Jason, you missed her like five times in a row or something. Yeah. You were rolling so terrible. So the yeah. la I said, the very last thing I said was, I don't, if he hits her, she's dead. I don't care. Um, uh, I don't care what, how much damage um, you do, she's gonna die. So you did like five damage. She had 15 left. She died anyway. So, but it it was so I listened to it without knowing what happened, right? And I remember thinking like, holy shit, 
I'm hearing the end of the campaign. Yeah, TPK. And it was really like the way it played out when you listen to the audio, it, it sounded legitimate. And I wrote down in my notes, I was like, rule number two, when when Ryan says something for the third time, whatever it is, like that's the most important thing on earth. Like I he, remember, I went, arcing. the magic's arcing. Yeah. I went down and then somebody helped me, I got up, and as opposed to because I still felt like a peeling like healing potion, whatever, as opposed to getting anybody else up, I just went and attacked again and went back down again <laughs> and then somehow got up again. Well, I think through. she also had like a charm spell or something where she Jason couldn't person. attack her. That's right. Jason was held for like half the fight. And right. then and then when he finally got to go, he missed like, he was the only one still up and missed like four or five hits in a row. So I was like, please just, please hit her. Because I knew you said yeah. you were gonna run. I was like, please just hit her. I don't care how much HP she has left. Just hit her. I'll call it. I'll call it good, and let's move on. So one of my favorite parts of that though was before it even happened, and I was kind of scouting out ahead. Yeah. And I made it into that room, and I was behind one of those, and you just texted me on Discord and said, "I said, well, what does it look like?" And you're like, "This is a boss room." <laughs> yeah. Like straight yeah, yeah. up video game. Like I was like, okay. I was like, I can't give you too much and I'm not gonna open the yeah. map because you're all gonna yeah. get here eventually. <laughs> so I think I gave you like a little descriptor, um, but then, it, but I was just like, yeah, you probably don't wanna go with this alone. Um, so yeah. So uh, yeah, especially early on, I was doing, we were doing a lot of like, kind of like discord whispers for some things. So, but eventually, um, you know, with the help of your new companion, Daryana, um, you made your way through this. It, uh, it took, a, it took, it looks like it took, um, one, two, three, three full sessions to get through that entire blood vault. And yeah. then afterwards, Daryana was like, well, thanks guys, peace. Um, and then we went on break in game. And then I went over to Daryana because I told Jess from the beginning um, that it was only going to be a couple of sessions because Andy was going to be gone for like a month. Um, you should go to nine four. So I pulled Jess aside at the break after she like rode away on a horse and was like, hey, so we have enough space at the table. Do you just want to like, Dariana's cool. Do you just want to like stick around? And Jess was like. Sure, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I think that was the, <laughs> that was the, the first yeah, highly the horse. conversation Cutter and Cordelia had, you know, right? Oh my God, you almost made me cry. I'm mean, not that that's hard oh to do. Oh my but... God. I remember that Jason actually sent it to me beforehand and was like, hey, listen, I want to say this visible. stuff. Uh, uh, there are some parts that I think was Yeah, there a was bit, a little. Can a you little send bit. me what it actually was? It was, yeah, it, it I, was I, intense. I oh my God. Yeah. That was so strong. Cause well, it, was it was kind of Cordelia's kinda like notes, idea to yeah. go there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so basically when the session started, Jason was the only one alive. So I was like, everyone, you're, you're down right now. So just be quiet. Yeah. Um, and Jason basically, I know what you wanted. I, I remember what you want. I'll say as much as I remember. You basically cut off all Kava's face. You wore it. You wanted to cut out her guts and like put shit all over her or something like that. But then you um, basically desecrate the altar and all. That. Oh yeah, you wanted to take out her colon and spread it all over the statue and put blood all and put shit all over everything. And then woke yeah. up. And then you can say as much of what you said to to Cordelia if you want to. I but just remember it was, legit. It was, the gist of it. The gist of it was is that like you know, like as Cutter is, it's about the job. It's about working together. It's about you know. And I honestly like I was at a point too, because as as uh, Eric said, like when I play D and D, I don't play it from a meta standpoint, and I try to play it through the character. So in that instance, Cutter was it was like a 50-50 of him just bailing. Completely and leaving everyone dead versus helping them back. So, uh, well, and well, so when what you decided to do was actually drag Cordelia's body over to the altar that was now covered in shit. Oh, that's what I did. I was wearing her face, right? You and were wearing all of his face. That's and right. And you actually that's had right. Sam, you had Cordelia by the hair, Alcava's yeah. dagger to her throat. Got a nine woke, one. Woke her up and was like, basically, like, fuck your god. Fuck you. We have a fucking job to do. 
Like you didn't even want to go in this room to begin with. And Sam was just like, nope, let's go yeah. in the room. And she like, no, that was in there. Yeah. Oh man. Well, and I thought you had started saying things to her before she woke up too. Am I well, he, he ate Okava's entire body and right. was ranting around the room for like 30 minutes waiting for her to wake up, basically being like, am I going to kill her? Am I going to fucking kill her? Am I going to fucking kill her? And yeah, yeah, so. But then I think I brought it back because Good times. as Cutter as Cutter has been like very individualistic, I think there's something Cordelia said earlier on about, I think it was during the zombie fight where we can't do this alone. Yeah. And so then I think I used that as a callback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was you a did. really good callback. Like, remember when you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it was like no, you got one good. thing right or something like that. It was yeah, good. Something. I mean, I, I really like the entire campaign. Um, and especially the early stuff is really good too. But I really think that the Blood Vaults is what really solidified the, the vibe and um, the party in general. Like not from like a, not from like a mechanical perspective, but from like an in-world, like party, you know, Cutter, Cordelia, Tongue Taker, everyone really solidified the group really as a group and really started taking another, like a, a stronger direction in what they were doing. And um, I just feel like the campaign really, really took off from including the Blood Vaults and on was just, you know, it, it just cranked it up a level you know, that had already been cranked up after the zombie fight. And it's just been, you know, fantastic since then. Um, so then after the Blood Vaults, you guys, um, so we're up to episode... Get a roll for a Dre. 11. I'm sorry, what was that about Dre? Being a roll for a Dre. Yeah, so basically, I believe um, Eric brought the body back to... Um, Tongue Taker brought the body back to the bar actually pull it out of the bag Do nine two, Jason? threw it on top of the table um, and then drank one for the homies. Um, and then you guys threw his body off of a cliff, which I, I guess is nine three. the tongue taker or the, the, the trollkin way. Yeah. Yeah. Because his body yeah. is all amazing. I haven't seen but some of these. It was because Andy and I were upstairs it. and we could hear Eric talking about the funeral. And normally, like, it was interesting because I, you don't get, we had only played, we hadn't played enough to get too attached to Dre, but the funeral was actually the most attached I was to him as a character. It was because Eric just made it so cool. Jason? You did. Um, you kept Dre's coin. Um, yeah. I think Sam was wearing his cloak for a long I time. Cloak. I thought we threw the coin off the cliff after him. No, yeah. I kept the coin. I threw oh, the body the off the cliff. He kept the coin in his pocket. Oh, the body yeah, 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 yeah. And I actually used the coin later for something. Yeah. yeah. So that's actually Cordelia in his cloak and um, Tongue Taker throwing uh, Dre's emaciated corpse off of a cliff. <laughs> it's a brazen. It was like, <laughs> thanks. Um, so after that, um, you guys made your way to Grandfather's Tears, which is the um, uh, the the river that runs through the Margrave, um, and Doriana had decided to stay. Um, and you were supposed to have a uh, contact that you were supposed to meet, but you heard something up ahead, and that was. Go to nine five. Beat him. Oh man, uh, is is uh, is Andy Prime still in the chat? Oh yes, I remember this because um, Andy, all, Andy and Matt were upstairs in the room I'm in now for, for like for an hours. hour and a half. <laughs> they were supposed to just like quickly come down, and you guys dicked around for so long. They were like, "What is happening?" Like where I was messaging back and forth with them. This was another like guest star moment because um, I had already set. We didn't. I didn't even because we play at my house. So I had only set it up for like four chairs and everything. Like I was just like, yeah, they're they're just not back yet. Because um, after Dre died, um, Matt was gone for a couple of days um, and or a couple of sessions. And then Andy was still out on paternity leave, but he was coming back. So a little bit behind the DMs or but a little background between um, Dre and Beatum, or uh, I'm sorry, Victor and Beatum. Victor uh, of the Calder was across the Ruthenian Plains and he felt this pulling and he followed this pulling all the way across the Ruthenian Plains to the Black Hills. Um, and Andy um, beat him 
was actually taken by Tolkien and was like naked on a torture rack and Tolkien got called away for something else and Victor showed up, cut him free because this is what he felt a drawing to from his god was this little gnome and and he was basically like you know and what's funny is i even did like a guest appearance thing between um victor and beat him yeah. because i kept like playing it out as if it was an npc for each of them and then copy pasting what they said to each other back and forth so they didn't know and then eventually they kind of figured it out right as i was telling them um this is actually beat him this is actually victor um, that was more for Andy than for than for um, than for uh, Matt, but that's how they got together. And then they went to Grandfather's Tears, and this is when you guys came back in, and they walked down my stairs and gave the line there. Yeah. Um, you guys, <laughs> there was a riverboat skill challenge where you guys. I'm good at ten one. You got into these little canoes, and that was a really fun skill challenge where you guys. That had was to basically really fun. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. So really quick. So this is where we first meet Victor. Matt's yeah. first new character. Yep. Russian Christopher Walken. So do you want to, who the hell's Victor? Well, so so their Victor was super simple. Like yeah. I just, when I thought about it, I was like, who's the most evil thing on earth? It's not all these like fantastical creatures. It's humans are the worst. And Ryan. And, uh, and, then, and then just Ryan was like, you could be a death cleric. And I was like, well, that'll be great. And then you look in the Midgard world book and shout out to Kobold Press. You guys definitely need to give Ryan more stuff. Um, Chernabog is like the perfect uh, god to worship and and is real, is a thing in real life. So like, this is like the actual symbol of Chernabog, I guess, over here. And uh, and it's just like, he was a guy that was like orphaned. He was raised hard. Uh, he worked with the gnomes and the gnomes are just the worst people in Midgard. And then he's drawn to this like old kind of wrinkly little gnome who he like kind of loves like a father like a dysfunctional father and then uh and then he just follows him and it kind of like he's his protector and and once ryan explained that a death cleric can actually heal people too because it helps him kill more people it made it pretty easy to, to do the character and it is very fun to use like russian that. accent and sounds like christopher walken yes i may help you now yeah i think the first thing i said because I, I, we were all dirty because we were by the river and I go, I feel filthy. Whenever Victor does something nice, it doesn't make him feel good. Like he only feels good like when he kills. So, but yeah, and then beat him so good. And then Jess, I guess when he met Jess, she was arms deep in a corpse. Like, I don't know what that means. But, and he goes, I hope not creepy for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 yeah there, there was the, the contact that you guys were supposed to meet. Timbor's contact was the guy that you killed. Um, oh, that's right. So then yeah. you had to like dig through his body for the map and stuff. And Jess, yeah, Jess. <laughs> well, I'm always happy to dig through a corpse. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so oh, much God. for uh, for adding <laughs> that quote. Did I do it right? I don't think um, I. I don't think I added it right. Well, you said quote humans are the worst, and then Streamlab said quote number five. You guys. Oh no, I think I did it wrong. Yeah. I tried to ask Andy how to do it, and he I just probably did it wrong. Oh, yeah. You just We'll do it created, later. We'll do it later. Command is add quote. That's what it is. Thank oh, you, Dan Miller. Oh, add quote. Um, we'll do it later. So you guys okay, met Dan. You did this river. Yeah, just do it now. I'll chat. Um, they, you guys did this fun river Thank challenge you. where basically like this, the, this magic from the Margrave. The Margrave is a living forest. Um, and it does not like evil things. So it's trying to reject you guys. And basically yeah. the river decided to turn back the other way and this storm happened and there was a skill challenge as you guys went through um, this uh, this thing. And at the very end of it, I believe it was, was it you, Jess, that got like ejected out of the boat? Yes, I did. Um, so you got, uh, knocked out of the boat and then there was this creature in the water um and you guys fought this creature i think jason was trying to shoot it with arrows from a distance and kept missing mm -hmm. again um victor finally used his chill touch for the first time yeah um uh after you did that you continued to um oh while you were on the boat um i think tongue taker said something 
um, and pissed off the forest. So a bunch of birds flew by and shit all over them. Um, yeah. And then uh, they were like, fucking forest. Um, and then that night when you guys went to sleep, you went to sleep underneath this giant tree and Tongue Taker went out to, I think he was on, 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 um, on watch. I was on watch. Yeah. yeah. So what happened? That night. So what happened, Tongue Taker? I remember hearing something. I was on watch. So uh, I went to, as opposed to waking everybody up from just hearing a rustling in a bush, I figured I'd go check it out. And where I heard the rustling, I just kind of shoved my sword into, which is by the way, this, a badass sword Huge, yeah. that I got from those zombie children place. Um, anyway, so I used that sword and just kind of stabbed into the bush. And uh, well, as it turned out, that was a shambling mound. And uh, killer bush. I immediately got swallowed. Oh, I have that. Uh, Whoa, go can to... we please quote that, Matt? What? I need that quote. Killer bush. Yes, killer please. bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay hold on i'm like oh. we skip 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 um go to oh, ten taker. nine <laughs> oh wait Sorry, uh no no, no. do ten eight number, first Sam? do do ten eight ten first eight. and i i immediately tried to do a throwback to uh matt his character dre's death yeah and give up as i uh knew it wasn't going to go well for me. But saved the party. He saved because the I party. think what Tom Taker did was he went to look first. And then you went to peek. And then uh, I, you, I, I remember somebody I said, said poke to peek. I'm, I'm not going to peek. I'm going to poke. So I shoved the sword oh, into right, it. Right. Both are just trying to see. And yeah. then go to 10-9. So it should just be the next one. That's another great quote to go with Killer Bush. We got to just put a bunch of quotes. <laughs> We'll, we'll retroactive. Yeah, I can add bugs. them off stream. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, it's it's right. is... adults only, right? But, we got those flavor on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 10 9 is, um, is Tongue Taker's final moment. I wonder if during the live. Uh, stream the next one you can just have one of those whiteboards up and sam can just be drawing i I, I would love to figure out a way to do that the problem <laughs> is you can't share screen on zoom so you oh, would almost okay. have to like come in with like another person and just have that somehow be up gotcha. but yeah i would I, I i would love for that to be a thing that we could do just have like a little block of like Explain sam live everything. drawing yeah, i guess i could like hook my ipad up to my computer we'll figure it out we don't yeah. do that right now. i would love we, that's we the could same easily put that in like the the top of the chat box right. uh, oh that would actually be super fun that was super fun so I would, okay we'll figure it out um we'll and, figure it out and, and then that was the end of tongue taker and then yeah tongue taker oh. tongue taker died and the, the best and of us you guys were able to save beat him from the treants um even though he was knocked unconscious, um, but you lost the super badass magic blood sword. Yeah. Oh, and then Eric used sword. his card in his last moment. No, they Eric did a good deed though. He threw he the used bag a of holding. Fortuitous circumstance. I'm sorry. It's a fortuitous yeah. circumstance to make sure that the bag of holding was yeah. not on him. That he had left it back at the tent. He gave it to Cordelia. Yeah, that's right. Because I was also while I was on duty. I was also the keeper of the bag, and I had all of our stuff. Yep. So the and I just scooped. I scooped. Beat it. him. Cordelia scooped the bag and we were out. All right. Um, and then you guys um, found, oh, as you ran, you ran into this little sprite creature and the sprite creature was basically like, follow me, like, like I'll help you escape, run, run. So you guys followed her and you met the Starless family at this basically treehouse complex. Um, you chatted with them for a while um, eventually, after they tried to force some tea on you over and over and over again, um, I, um, you, um, how did you guys get knocked unconscious? Did the druid, like, release some magic or something? Or did you all just, like, Yeah, because eventually... I think two of us resisted the, yeah. no, we didn't, me and Dariana didn't, didn't drink, drink the tea, Didn't drink the tea, yeah. But I think the druid came out and cast some, like, cloud of sleep or something on yeah. you guys and just some knocked it away. magic. And then basically, um, you woke up uh, tied to a tree 
Um, mm -hmm. And then you heard another voice that you didn't recognize. And that was... Sylvester, good morning. Sylvester. Um, so when you woke up, you were tied to this really high tree with all these markings on the ground. Basically, you were being um, uh, prepared for sacrifice. The Starless family was like an orphan family um, full of, of people left in the Margrave. There was like a druid. There were these two little like bug creatures, um, little roachlings, that's what they were. There was um, there was an, uh, a human, I think there was a half orc, and then there was a sprite creature. Um, and you guys basically woke up, um, met Sylvester. Um, Sylvester said, so, uh, hi, we're gonna fucking kill them all, right? And everyone was like, fuck yeah, we are. Um, someone teleported away from the ropes that were holding you. Basically, you got free. You fucking wrecked everybody with another super fun combat. I busted out those, the levels. Yeah, yeah that combat was so fun. And for those that don't know, we play at home on a 40 inch television flat with a plexiglass screen over the top of it with animated maps playing beneath it. Yeah. Um, and then, but these trees were like 40, 50, 60 feet up. So I actually had these, the same ones that Matt Mercer uses, the kind of like gridded like levels that are like, you know, an inch high. So like four of them, four of, and then a platform is actually 40 feet. So we had all these levels all over the map and people flying around. Um, Tongue Taker got kicked off the top no, of it no, by a Cutter dude. got kicked off. Cutter. I'm sorry, Cutter, Cutter got, got kicked, kicked off. off. Fell like and, 60 feet oh, to the ground. And that's and, when we finally saw Cutter's real face. Correct. For what his mask Yeah, fell Ryan screwed the reveal. I was, you weren't there. wasn't even there. Yeah. yeah, it was the reveal. And then beat him, jumped off, and then did like the superhero like feather fall through the roof. Yeah. Yeah, that's my <laughs> fault uh, on Jason. I uh, I revealed something when he wasn't here, um, which I will never do as a DM again. So very briefly they saw and they saw uh, Cutter's real face, which we don't need to go too deep into. Um, well, basically, it's if your face was totally skin. Beautiful. Right? Well, partially. Partially. Yeah. Not the whole thing. Basically, when he fell, the mask he was wearing, like, so he, so he slash me rolled a nat one or whatever. So the, 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 what I decided in the moment um, as the, um, the penalty for that was the mask he was wearing uh, fell off and they briefly saw his face underneath it. Um, but then the mask came back on and, and they continued on. They wrecked the entire family. Um, they also took these bracelets from the mm -hmm. family that protected them from the Margrave. Basically, it hid them from the Margrave knowing that they were there because the Margrave the entire time was like lashing at their legs or trying to like uh, make them get lost in the forest because it's a living forest that hates evil things. So, um, and then you guys continued on and you ended up uh, hearing some, um, and this is when we did our first session online after COVID kicked in. Um, you ended up hearing some um, people or something, and you came across a group of Derekul in the Margrave. Um, and when you attacked them, Cutter realized that he knew them. Yeah. yeah. And who were they to you, Cutter? So the... Um... Basically, in the uh, the Ghoul Imperium, there are these these groups of ghouls that are kind of going these raiding parties to get flesh to eat from you know from the surface. And uh, Hunter was part of the or not Hunter uh, Cutter was part of this uh, one of these groups at one time. And these were kind of his old his old crew that he he ran with that betrayed him. So um, you killed. Uh, yeah. So you ended up killing one of the guys, um, and now that now they weren't just hunter crews, um, they were imperial soldiers, and they had a symbol of who, um, of who, uh, yeah, Here. they had a symbol of who they were working for now, um, and it was Drago Blackfly, the guy that uh, is is in the Ghoul Imperium. Um, so uh, after you guys wrecked them you followed a map they had back to the Tongue of Durinde. Um, I'm gonna go which... back to the Midgard map because we're pretty much done with Doodles now, probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can just zoom in on the Margrave if you want. 
Also, um, I think that's. I don't. We didn't talk about it, but when we beat Sister Alcava, I took a necklace, and I think that's where I broke one of the jewels from the necklace yes. and made Brian my favorite boy. Fry guy. Yes. Your sweet you, boy Brian. You oh, found Brian, a. Uh, you You're found a. Um, what's up? No go. Oh, you found a um, a blood pearl necklace, and each of the blood pearls will cast the spell Sanguine Horror that summons a blood elemental. So I think you still have two left, but in the blood elemental stat block, it doesn't say it dis- or in the spell it doesn't say it disappears after a certain time. You just summon it, and it hasn't died yet. So as long now as I keep him a, fed. Yeah, as long as you keep him fed. He gets. And he you're loses, a good mom. I'm he loses a size every time he doesn't feed. <laughs> yeah. So he's large right now. No, he's medium currently in our current campaign because you chopped parts of him off to oh. make him fit into the bag. And yeah. also, too, they decided to let me tag along because they found me on the tree and we fought the Starless. Yep. But okay. according to what I told them all, I was just kind of out in the forest searching for artifacts and whatnot. Yep. Just looking but, handsome. Yeah, just looking handsome. So the party over the course of a couple of, of a couple of days in the Margrave picked up Dariana at the Blood Vaults. They picked up Victor. They found Beatum back. And then Tongue Taker died and they picked up Sylvester. So at this point, three out of the original six players still have their characters. And the three other characters, two died and came and are new characters. And then we added Jess on this Dariana. Um, and then Sylvester has an um, imp named Annie as a familiar. Um, so you guys, yeah. So familiar. you guys went down into this, um, which I can't uh, wait to see with his new green screen. Oh yes. Yeah. I, mean, I also I realized said, you guys don't have your filters on, but I'm gonna keep. No, I, I didn't do mine. Uh, I figured since we're just chatting about the, the curtain, game. Right? Yeah. I am Cordelia. So. There you go, Sam. Now, I figured we're chatting, all. and I was going to be Tongue Taker and then Sylvester, so I figured oh. tavern setting. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Grim Reaper. So my snap camera is not working well on my filter. It's just freezing on me. Mm. Yep. So I'll have to fix that for next time. Yeah. Maybe it needs an update or something. Well, I can give you another. Let's see, do I have him, have him up here? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, yes. There's Sylvester with Annie. Sylvester, look very beautiful. There it is. There's my filter. <laughs> Can't wait for that. The imp is so good. Yeah, get rid of that floating line. square. Though. With the wink. <laughs> yeah, anytime I try to use the uh, snap camera, it just freezes in it. Hmm. Interesting. I'll play with it later. Maybe I just need to restart my, you know, totally frozen. So. What episode are we on? We are currently on episode 14. No, 15. 15 and yeah, 16. 15. So you guys okay, went down into cool. this area. We'll, we'll cruise through some of these. Um, you went down into this area. Um, you battled the rest of the bad guys. You met their leader named Rays, who clearly knew Cutter. Um, you guys had wrecked everybody as they were trying to cast some spell in the back. Um, and right at the end, Rays, who was wearing some face on his helmet. Yeah. Um, yeah. He basically said, fuck you, come get it, and swallowed yeah. a potion. Um, and disappeared, um, and and that's how that ended. And then one of the guys that you were supposed to find from earlier, Timbor, had sent you to find this guy named Eggert Matthew, yeah. um, because he had this sanguine cloak that he wanted you to get, and he gave you like a thousand gold to buy it from him, or said to take it. Um, he was in a sack in the back of the room. You guys let him out of the sack, and he was a, kind of a dickhead. Um, so you fucking killed him. Well, I tried to shove him back in the sack first. Yeah. But he was not having it. Uh, basically no. said, get me out of here, you heathens. Um, and he was just an asshole, so you killed him and you took And the... Sylvester said, you're being very rude. And then yeah. I tried to shove him back in the bag. That's right, yes. He was being rude. But that was that crazy cave that had the mushrooms that yep. swallowed. That speak primordial for Ariana's. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then you got the sanguine cloak. 
which is a mantle of blood vengeance. Um, and then you continued, you finally got out of the Margrave. You went across this abandoned, um, uh, kind of broken down fortress. You were gonna stay overnight, but as you were exploring it, one of you checked this hole and you found, um, this episode is called Behold the Heartache, per Matt. Um, you found, oh, oh man, we shouldn't talk about parts of this. Because Janelle's um, online right now, right? Janelle is in stream. She'll love this. It's oh terrible. no! Oh. Janelle. Anyway, but you ran from a you ran from a beholder in an area you were trying to um, in, a, in a place you were trying to stay overnight. You then finally made your way to the outskirts of Clarsaya, where you found this small house, kind of off the beaten path, where you wanted to rest. Um, the people that lived at this house were named Janelle and Tracy. Well, so I asked. I was like, "Oh, is it like Janelle's house? How it's like set oh. kind of far back out, and there's." Oh, Janelle has it on mute, so... Oh, no, it's back on. Come back. Oh, no, she Come muted back. it. Oh. Come back. Before we go any further, my apologies, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically... So I, and then Ryan was like, hey, I'm going to be super fucking cruel to you and name these yes. characters after people you know, love, and adore. And so, cherish. yeah, so basically that's exactly what happened. You were like... So I was trying to describe the house, and you're like, oh, it's like Janelle's house. And I'm like, yeah, it's Janelle's house. And guess what? The people that live there are named Janelle and Tracy. Because um, I know you're going to kill them. Um, Sorry, and by the way, this I so think much. this was my favorite scene, I think, in yeah. any game I've ever played. By ever. Oh, MVP. One of the many. Sylvester, what? I know you basically, everyone was kind of stealthing around the house. And Sylvester, just say yeah, what you was, did yeah. to uh, Janelle and Tracy. And they had fed him, right? Like they'd taken him in. Right. It was wait, such wait a good let him describe what yeah. he did. No, I'm not going to describe it, but yeah, go for it. Sylvester, no, go for it. I, I, my character, Sylvester, he's, he's a warlock uh, packed to the chain. But anyways, he has disguised self and the actor feet. So he can kind of change his appearance and his voice and everything. So uh, went to an old standby and he just went up and kind of peered through the window first. Cutter was sneaking around, but I just decided to knock on the door and I disguised myself as sort of an elderly man. And when they answered, I kind of just uh, portrayed an elderly traveler, weary, and just asked for food. Can you help an old traveler? I'm just hungry, making my way to Paranelia. And they were gracious hosts and invited me in and sat me down and they fed me. And uh, <laughs> I asked them about them and they have children that were off into the city. And then I cast a spell called heartache where basically you feel the loss of love so badly that it causes you physical pain. And I think I critted. Mm -hmm and killed them both instantaneously through pure heartache. In, in their soup bowls. Like, yeah, yeah, their faces fell straight into their soup bowls and I sat there and continued to eat my yeah. soup. I think and that I was like the perfect definition in. of evil in this, right? Yeah. Yes. It's not overt, it's using someone for, you know. Yeah, yeah well, we with, with no regard to, to, what was that? We needed a place to stay. Yeah. No, I know, but I'm just, I'm saying, man, it was, it was like good. the it most was, nuanced. It, it was sweet. It was great. Yeah. And it really, really kind of, um, really defines, uh, Sylvester kind of as a character, this like subtle and then just like, oh, right there. It was so good. So good. And we just met this guy. And charming. Yeah. yeah. And then like, he only just, decided, and then he just, man. and then he ate. He ate the rest. He ladled up some of the rest of the food that they were eating. Called the rest of the party in, cracked a bottle of wine, and just chilled for the night. Yeah, I found some wine and I cooked everybody else a meal. Yeah, and uh, we found beds there to lay in. I think Brian yeah. bled a few of them dry. Yeah, Brian yeah. took. Yeah. Well, Brian Cutter feasted took, them. Cutter <laughs> took uh, the. Oh, yeah. Vicker, yeah. Vicker made his altars for yep. Chernobog. I'm sorry, Janelle. You know. Cutter took you to either the husband too, or wife. If I remember right, yeah. he he started one really of commending him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I think that nice was the. Talk. Yeah, that was nice like the first sort of you. moment of respect between Cutter and someone else in the party. I think, you know. Absolutely. Well, and yeah, to be honest, we'll get to this. Yeah, we'll get 
to this later, I think you said we'll talk about the playing in Evil campaign. Oh, for sure. It's yeah, kind yeah. of why yeah. I, after Tongue Taker died, I wanted a different type of character. Tongue Taker was a brute, but nothing overtly evil about him. So I wanted to, uh, you don't play many evil campaigns, so I want to take advantage of that. No. <laughs> uh, so. Um, so we'll cruise through some of this. Stop me if it gets a little bit much. Basically, the party decides to split with ha with the ladies, Jess and <laughs> Sam, taking Beatum after he shaved his beard into town, uh, dressed up as a little boy. Um, and the guys, um, Victor, Sylvester, and um, and Cutter decide to go through the um, through the uh, sewers. You guys ran into a rat king, uh, this giant rat kind of amalgamation. The sewer boys. Oh, there's a picture of the sewer boys in there. Um, I mean, I don't, it's somewhere on our discord. I did the two album oh. covers. I did sewer boys and then ABCs with mommies and me. Oh yeah. So good. Um, I'll post all the stuff in the discord. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, uh, so you guys strolled in just fine. The sewer boys fought their way in. You eventually got together in the city. You realize that there is a festival going on, um, and it's not even a festival, it's an archery tournament for Dejana Severn, the person that you're trying to find. Basically, this is her like coming of age party right before she's gonna turn 16. There's a beat him a lullaby. <laughs> I just saw that too. Yeah, Dariana sang him a lullaby. Oh my gosh! Do you remember that, Jess? No, I don't remember it. I don't. No. Yeah, I have it written. Awesome it was like hush it was, little beat. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna buy you. I don't remember. But it was so that. fearsome. It was, it was so dark. Yeah. Was that was we'll that part of the somewhere. RP though on on Discord? I yeah, no, she might have yes. posted it, and then, then I, I made it. her say And then you sang person. it the next yeah. session because yeah. yeah. we we had like a really cool like there was like a long break because Ryan had to go to LA, and and so it was like a back and forth, and we were like in in pairs having yeah, these we like deep paired. discussions. And it was nice. I think that as far as inspiration goes, I think Jess almost constantly has inspiration. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, Jess has definitely gotten like the most inspiration. Out of nowhere, well, this let's talk about why. just pop up and let's I have to Let's talk about like... how. You want to know how to get inspiration in a game with Ryan? Make a dad joke. That's all you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not that hard. It's not that hard. Listen, I'm I'm easy. If you ever play, if you ever play cards against humanity with me, all you have to do is drop a Hitler card or something super fucked up, and you win. Like it's, I've got it's not one uneasy. inspiration from you ever because you hate me and it's personal. I don't hate you, and it's not personal. You're just not funny. Either. Okay, well, <laughs> oh. that's true, and I don't have an argument. <laughs> when you Too start doing woo. when you start that's doing art on stream, I'll start giving you inspiration again. Wow. I don't have to put up with this, even though I have for over a year. Yeah, you never do anything for me ever. I keep saying, I don't have to take this shit. Yeah, a year later. I still don't have to take it. I, I still don't have to take this. Um, so you got together, you found there was an archery tournament. Cordelia decided to enter it. Even though she did not take archery as her fighter subclass, she's a sword dancer, never really picked up a bow in her life. But I made you do some skill checks or something to gain yeah. some proficiency or something. Um, in then during the archery contest, you actually, we actually had a full on archery contest with like rolls and it was like three rolls to hit the target and total number of points. It was pretty cool. I thought it was a good mechanic. Um, Cordelia actually got to the second round out of three, I think you got eliminated. Yeah, I mean, I like cruised through the first round and I actually, and I, I did really well, but then I blew yeah, the Against a, a nation of female warriors who are the best archers in the entire world. Um, mm -hmm. And then, um, ba, 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 ba. oh, it's Dijon Severn against one other person. Oh, you also ran into, you were given a gray ribbon to mark you as like a newbie for this. And you ran into one other gray ribbon person. Um, and she stormed off after she lost. But then in the final, it was Dijana versus somebody else for the title of uh, to win her tournament, basically. Yeah. And she would have won, but then Beatum used his divination role um, oh, well, now that you posted it, you have to say it out loud, Jess. Yep. Nope. No. Come no. on. Don't Come make on. me do it again. Do it. Do it. No. Do it. Oh, God. Okay. 
Hush, little beat, I'm look at the man. Mama's gonna buy you a caterpillar cocoon. <laughs> God, kill me. Uh, if that cocoon does not suffice, Auntie's gonna buy you or get you some bloody mice. And if these bloody mice are dead, Brian's gonna suck out all <laughs> your blood. Hey. <laughs> Sleep so it's not my character accent, but so good. you put me um, on the spot. There you go. So then uh, Beatum actually used his divination magic to make her uh, miss her final shot, uh, or at least not do not do as well on her final shot. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so she lost her own tournament. Um, afterwards, and, afterwards. And Dijana graciously accepted defeat, which oh, yeah, she, Cordelia could not. Awful. So the thing about Dijana Severin is she's perfect. She's yeah. gorgeous. I mean, she's 15. She's a beautiful young woman. Um, she's the nicest person ever. She's a great warrior. She's really intelligent. She's incredibly empathetic. She basically glows. She, in any other campaign, would be like top tier NPC, like the princess you save, like the, the person you worship. She's, she's she everything that Cordelia wishes she was uh, in a way that reminds her of somebody else. No, am I wrong? I don't think now is the time for me to comment on that. <laughs> Just I said Cordelia, you know. not Sam. I know. Okay, all right. Are they pretty much the same person? No. Yes? No. no. <laughs> Jason's like, yes. Specifically Cordelia, because Cordelia is like 16. A and that's amplified. what she acts. Yeah. Um, anyway. So basically, at that point, then they start this, they start figuring out a way to try to kidnap this girl, um, and in the only way I can describe it is the smoothest caper I've ever seen happen. Everything goes perfect. Annie scouts out the house. You guys decide to turn her. Uh, you guys have this plan to lure her into an alley where your cart is, so you can immediately leave as soon as you find her. Um, and she's just walking around town, and I don't remember who talked to her first. Was it Sylvester that did suggestion on her? I went first, though. It was me and Beat him. Beat him was my son. Yeah, yeah. it was Sir Sylvester and Cordelia, primarily. We yeah. had the other waiting in the alley, and uh, I, we kind of, I, we both have ridiculously high charisma, and we just kind of threw praise on her and talked to her. We just kind of walked with her and said, oh, we have a gift for her, and got her into the alley. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you turn yeah, I actually I threw a suggestion on her to mm -hmm. follow us to give her this gift and then as soon as we got her by the wagon uh, we I polymorphed her into a tortoise great suggestion from uh, Jess by the way because um, I was thinking like uh, some other I think we like always a it was Jason <laughs> could be a nightmare so she's like no a turtle or a tortoise I'm like brilliant so yeah, we have this Mandela was, effect where we all think it was Jess who said it, and then every time we say that, Jess is like, "It was Jason." We're like, "No, I think, it was Jess." I think what happened was Jason said it, and like nobody acknowledged it or heard it, well, and not, I said it. it later, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, Jess." But it's like, it's that kind of effort, like, inspiration. Guy. You, don't, you don't listen to the grumpy guy. You listen to. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so, so Jason, so Jason had the great idea. So we polymorphed her into a tortoise. Throw her in, um, oh, oh, we had previously made a little cage box that we had rode up while we were in town. Yeah. Into that and rode out of town. Yep. So you guys, most of the people got out well. The cart went through, some horses went through. Uh, when Cutter was trying to go through, he actually would have been uh, found out, yeah. but Beatum used another of his divinations to, um, like, portents. Yeah, uh, to to um, make him more believable. And you just literally drove out the front gate. But prior to that, while that was happening, Annie had set fire to the, it was at the inn. Yeah, Sylvester left a bunch of barrels of oil in his room. Yeah, no, fire I- Fire to the inn. Yeah, I lit fire to the inn as a distraction. And actually beat him used the portent on me. Uh, oh, was Jason it you? Jason got stuck. Yeah. And then I went to cast another spell to save Jason, and my their save was to. It was a suggestion to, spell. Yeah. Right, because the only portent he had left was a low number. Gotcha. He wouldn't use yeah. it for Jason to save, so 
uh, when I was riding through, I cast Suggestion again. They saved and then beat him, used the fortune to give the loan number. So it works, so Jason, you get through. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then you guys kidnap this 15 year old girl super, super easily. And then uh, Sylvester also left a note on the parents porch, directing them towards a character named Sinesh, uh, Sinesh the White Eye. Sinesh White Eye. Like yeah. Yep, out in their Athenian plains um, to try to draw the attention out that direction. I mean, it was just genius top to bottom. I've never seen something go so smooth. Um, it wasn't so, Brian either in a wine barrel or you like left something him back awesome. at Tracy and Janelle's house in a wine barrel. Yeah, yeah. So then you get back to Tracy and Janelle's place, um, and uh, you can't keep the spell forever. <laughs> so when she wakes up, you take out all of the S and M gear you had previously stolen from the Temple of Aprostala, and you bind up this fifteen-year-old girl in all your bonus S and M gear. <laughs> And then stick her in, a, and then you double sack her, like. Sack but on the but top, Sylvester, sack on the like in character, didn't know it was in there. Like it was tongue kicker stuff. Yeah. So so Eric did it perfect. Where Eric's like, "What's this?" And he's like, pulling out like all the perfect gear that you need to kidnap yeah. somebody. <laughs> yeah. And everyone, I think at the same time, everyone had that same like, "Oh shit!" I remember so awful. That, that moment, and everyone was like, "So perfect." So they bog agger and like, hog tie her and do all yeah. this like leather fetish shit with her um yeah. and we had and, bought uh, the extra we had bought the extra sacks while we were in town too to put her in yep. sack and we bought sacks of grain too to throw on top of her yeah yeah we got eggs flour butter cheese meat yeah. and burlap Ranks, farm equipment to hide to just make it look like a normal yeah. wagon so then um you guys make your way back toward to Zobek, but i didn't feel like taking forever to do that so we did this really i love this session i thought that this was, one was really, really fun good. so basically i, I love that and i also really quick back in zobek too some things we did in between sessions there was some great rp through our discord oh yeah oh yeah um, yeah yeah during those as well we won't get into but i thought that was fantastic yeah so this session what we basically did was um, and Andy, uh, Andy Prime, Evil Andy XO went first and just had such like a, just such a good first one that it really set the tone. But basically there were a number of towns um, on the way to Zobek from, um, do you want to zoom out a little bit and show from Zobek just to Clarsaya on the, uh, on the Midgard map? Um, yes, yeah, so yeah, just zoom in one. And then click on the political boundaries again. Yeah, that's perfect right there. Nope, down a little bit. Um, hmm. So basically, all of the areas, so Clarsaya and then goes to... Sforesca, and then there's a road, and then it's Runestad, and then there's a road, and then it's Sinistad, and then it's a road, and it's another city, and then it's the, and then it's Zobak, right? So basically what I said was what we're going to do is I'm not really going to say a whole lot. What I want you to do is you're each going to be assigned a section of the road based on a roll that they started with, and Andy rolled highest. And you're going to either get a piece of the road or you're going to get a town. Name. And I'll describe kind of the road, and I'll describe the city or town, but you, as a player, have to tell me kind of what everybody does and what you do. So you are going to do a storytelling session for me, but each section will also be a skill check that you guys have to complete. Um, I think I think only Matt failed the first one. Um, but in my skill checks, if you succeed on a high enough roll, basically it's a 15 DC, but if you go for an 18 and declare it first and get an 18, you get advantage to the next person. So everyone was killing their rolls, but each person had a segment of the road or city and just had these amazing stories where um, a lot like Jason's was about, you know, has has um, has the 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 loss of um, Dejana Severin from Plasai have been heard yet. And there's one guy who heard about it. So he like snuck in and like killed this guy. 
There were some bandits that attacked on the road. Um, I think Jess had one where they met this guy on the road um, and like dunked him into like the wine barrel that was actually Brian, so Brian could feed on this guy. Um, it, it was such a fun session of just like the players taking over the storytelling and also succeeding at skill challenges. I really, I did a good job. That was super fun. So that was really fun. Um, blah, 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 blah. You guys made your way back. That was to great, by the way. That was a. And there, was, there was like a highlight moment too with Sam where there was oh, well, the, the Senjurstad bat mitzvah and the <laughs> yeah. performance cart like showed up. It was like the same model that Beatum had designed that Tongue Taker burned down. I, so we kind of would talk about how like our plan to be this traveling performer troupe it fell, <laughs> fell apart, fell apart. Um, and then it would kind of come up, you know, now that when we introduce new characters and stuff. And it was so for mine, I did that we like had to pretend to be traveling performers and we got to like live that dream out for like a little while. Yeah. And then those guys ended up being, and then I realized I was just making a joke and I had to actually like do a whole scene. So then those people were like evil and then you had to fight them. Well, I don't so so Victor <laughs> sat close to them and then Cutter said something like fat is flavor. And then they basically, yeah, it did not end well for the body. I don't, I don't remember. I remember at the time <laughs> thinking it reminded me of one of the stories from, um, what's, uh, from Patrick Rothfuss' book. Name of the Wind. Name, of, Name the of the Wind, where he stumbled across another group of people that were, like, pretending yeah. to be, like, his people. But then, like, they were, like, they were pretending that girl prisoner or whatever. I remember it reminded me of that a little bit. Like and, pretend and, performers. Yeah, like his character knew that they weren't performers and they yeah. emerged as mall. Yeah. Um what's this is so then we get back to Zobek. Um and in Zobek, um uh Sylvester actually goes by the name Hamish. No, no, no. Still in, in Zobek is still go by Sylvester. Still go by Sylvester. Yeah. You had a room at the Seven Bells Tavern. Um you needed to get back to uh Morgau quickly. I, right, so, but I lived in Zobek. Yeah, to you previously did, and you have rooms kind of just on, yeah. you know. Um, you you find out, basically you say that the Cloven Nine can help you get back to Morgal, but there's going to be a cost. And the Cloven Nine, and Andros of the Cloven Nine basically says, um, sure, I'll, you can use our teleportation circle, but it'll take you right back to where you need to go, but you'll owe us a favor. Each one of you owes us one favor. And you guys are all like, fuck it, let's do it. So you get on the teleportation circle. It takes you back to Morgau and Duresh. You actually end up in um, a, uh, a temple that um, Timbor, um, or an area that Timbor kind of controls. So you ring this bell that has no ringer in it over and over and over and over and over again. And you hear no sound coming, but eventually someone comes and lets you out of this dark room. And at some point in the future, you meet up Timbor, and Timbor's like, thanks for ringing that bell like a thousand fucking times. We didn't think it would just work. And then once Beatum knew that that's what was happening, he yeah. just kept ringing it. He kept it. ringing kept it, yeah. Ding, 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 yeah. Um, you delivered to Jana Severn to Rojan, who just proceeded to like paw and lick all over her before taking her away. You had, oh, whoa, wait a second. As you were riding back into um, Bratis Lore. Yeah, you Sarah Roxley. Were, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Was Sarah, where was Sarah Roxley? Sarah Roxley was outside of. She Hosaya. was outside right before we so it, got back in. So, yeah. So, as you're coming in, the other gray ribbon was this person who decided to attack Cordelia. So, Cordelia, do you want to say what you want to um, say about that? Well, because like, um, I don't think we really uh, talked about it in character. So, Cordelia is attacked by a woman and says. Uh, something about, I like, because it's one of those things like the party doesn't really know you, nah, and it's just like uh, that the third swan has died, and this was her reasoning for attacking Cordelia. Um, and Cordelia fought her, just trounced this bitch, like, just destroyed her. I gotta make the next um, one harder. Um, yeah, you, or you yeah. don't have to. Um, so uh, all Cordelia told the party was, do not intervene, no matter what. Even if yeah. I die, like I would rather die than you intervene on this. And then said, that's probably gonna happen. It could happen about four more times. Uh, and yeah. if it does, and she's having this kind of duel to not interfere, like let me die before 
you affect the outcome of this. So, um, and yeah, that's you wrecked this chick, and then Victor, yeah. I think, had turned her into a zombie to follow you guys around oh, for a yeah. while. Yeah. For a little as while. A present, as a present for you. Yeah. Um, then you make your way into the city, um, and um, suddenly, uh, you, you hear Atticus from down the road saying, you know, Cordelia, you're back. And then suddenly, this sword bursts through the front of his chest, and he drops to his knees. And before Cordelia can even take a step forward, these two blades cross and his head goes rolling on the ground in front of him. And she sees this beautiful blonde woman um, who calls something out to her, says, you know, basically the third swan's dead and I'm gonna save you for last, drops a piece of paper on Atticus's chest and runs away. When Cordelia runs up, eventually she sees this paper and it's actually a contract because Cordelia was a contract killer um, working for Rodion, apparently one of her rivals also took out contracts, and Atticus was a blood, um, a blood retriever. So basically, yeah, people, like a collector. Yeah. So if people had debts, one. he would take their blood and give it to this other blood collector. Um, but he would skim some off the top and give it to Cordelia. Um, his boss took out a hit on him to kill him for being for skimming off of the top, and apparently this this woman. Um, took that contract that specifically named Cordelia as someone to be careful of when you're going to kill this guy um, and um, and killed Atticus right in front of her. Um, dropped the contract on him and bounced. And then, uh, so Jason, um, what happened after that? So if uh, you've been sticking around the stream the entire time, then remember that Cutter was admiring Atticus's face when he first met him, he took advantage of that situation and picked up his uh, decapitated head and kind of uh, sneaked away and magi had it magically enchanted to preserve it more than the handful of days that his faces normally last. Well, so you, you took the head, but then you cut off the face. And yeah, you, I took the you, face. You, yeah. you took, a, you, like, this was like a just a take 10 kind of moment. Like, I don't care how long it takes. I'm gonna make this the nicest face I've ever cut off of a skull. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Paid a lot um, of money to get it enchanted. Yeah. Yeah, paid it a bunch of money to get it enchanted so that it's preserved. Because normally, what what Cutter does is he'll he'll cut off someone's face and wear it as a mask so he can kind of, you know, pass to somebody else for a while. But eventually, it starts to like rot and sag. So he'll just eat it after he gets a new one. Well, and, and then. And really quick too we've kind of brushed over this as we've gone through our history here but every couple days we're finding uh cutter a person to kill to take a face yeah oh so yeah he does so he and, can look and he's got to eat yeah. yeah and yeah. he eats oh, and human he needs, flesh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. he yeah, eats yeah, human yeah. flesh as well um and so. then after victor and uh they saw cutter do that for the first time they kind of had this like symbiotic thing going yeah. where Cutter would take the face off um, and then Victor would take the rest, the you know, rip the rest of the skin off like a banana um, and use the head as altars all over the world, little altars to Chernobog. So if you- I'm if pretty you sure we used Atticus to party, skull though for- Oh yeah, you did for something else, we'll get there. But if you follow <laughs> the path of the party, you'll find these little like, these little triangles of yeah. bone with the skull in it kind of like tucked away all over the world where Victor's been, yeah, doing the, doing the Chernobog's worship. Um, yeah. So, how, uh, Ryan, how long were you planning on killing Atticus again? Just Oh, God, from before we even started the campaign. He was in my backstory. <laughs> he was in, My 11-page yeah. backstory. He was in the backstory. So he died on episode... 26 so for 25 episodes i had already written out how he was going to die and what was going to happen and i was just waiting and waiting and that is the entire reason that atticus stuck around with the party for the first like two or three sessions because i wanted them to know and i didn't think it would take that long to get to clark Sayan back so at so i felt like it would have been more impactful if it was quicker um but still pretty impactful especially for sam who there were some real tears shed um i'm an emotional person That's and really i will awkward. not apologize Listen, for that. it wouldn't it wouldn't be as fun for me if you were so <laughs> was it atticus um, was written as your perfect other 
He no. was. And was he your well. perfect other, or was he Well, just, he was are you asking Sam toy? or Cordelia? Oh. <laughs> A little bit of both. He was, person, remember? He was Cordelia's only real friend, if nothing else. Yeah. And boy toy. And boy toy. And he was obsessed with you. He was infatuated with oh you. Oh my god. Well, I wrote the yeah. character, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so the second the second I got her backstory, I was like, well, he's fucking dead. I'm gonna kill I am shit still sad guy. about it. I should have, I knew, like, I wrote in the blood skin, and, like, I wrote all that in, but it didn't make it any easier. I was going to kill him, and you gave me the weapon to kill him with. The, the backstory yeah. of the fact that he was, like, skimming blood and his boss was going to be pissed. I'm you like, asked for daggers, so I gave you, like, 20 daggers. Right, and then I used that dagger, turned it into a sword, and stuck it through his that chest. That doesn't make it any easier for me, I Sam. loved it. It was great. I love the Process. daggers. We'll talk about daggers at the end, too, just in case people don't know. Remind me later when we talk about the evil campaign. We're almost done. We're on episode 25. We only have, like, five more to go. Um, we'll talk about evil campaign, remind me about daggers and stuff. So you preserved the face, but then you actually took the face, um, you took the skull, you took Atticus down into the basement of the, um, um, of the, uh, uh, it was Cutter's uh, room. Yeah. In the, um, in the castle that Rhodium was at. Yeah. And you basically, you decided to use it to do a, um, a ritual to try to contact um you try to contact Atticus again, didn't you? To try to let Cordelia say goodbye. Uh so we, we no. asked we asked the question to try to figure out like Cordelia, we let Cordelia ask the question. That's right. You oh, to try to, to find spell Sabine. To yeah. try to find Sabine and it basically said I think in the spell it was like it has to be within seven days of you or this or that or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, and also we did. It wasn't for her to say goodbye because we're yeah, all just it was to find thirsty. Yeah. yeah. We want to enact revenge. Yeah. 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 But then yeah. basically the spell basically said there's no way you could find her in the time allotted. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of a dud, but it was a really cool moment for the party to kind of like get together. I think Beatum had a moment with with Cordelia where he was like, well, you're uh, our friend or something. And Cordelia I, and Sam was very surprised. Like, oh, you're going to help me? Like, what? this is my personal problem and you're going to help me? Yeah. Um, I think Cutter wasn't there, though. I think he was like, fuck this and I'm out or something. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, well, I think Victor, because Chernabog, like, it respects power and strength. And the reality is that Cordelia is the strongest member of our party like when it just comes to she like, definitely has kind of most kills with... if she remembers to keep yeah. taking um, oh my bits god from i need to get my little and so, and so i think, bits I think victor time. like that when they were at the barn like talking about that like he sees like part of chernabog in her like in that power so after that you you um you had already given dejana to lucan uh, to um to rojan and you're supposed to come back the next day to get your next mission you guys went back to meet with Rodion again, and suddenly you felt a presence that was so frightening and so powerful that it literally brought you to your knees. And in burst, the vampire king of Morgau, King Lucan. Yeah, he's a sexy beast. Um, yeah. And he he immediately just rushes to Rodion and just bitch slaps him so hard, he flies across the entire room, smashing a pillar, ending up on the ground. You guys don't know what happened to him after that. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Inspiration. Inspiration. For the win. Um, uh, he, um, and, you know, Lucan basically says, you piece of shit, you worms. Do you know that you could have started a war with Paranalia? I'm still dealing with Krakovar. I'm dealing with some ghoul stuff. How dare you do this? But good job. Guess what? Now you work for me. Um, and he basically gave you a mission. He basically said there's a heretical group of Red Sisters called the Red Winter that want to eliminate vampires from the Church of Morena. You have to go find them and eliminate them. And while you're doing that, there are rumblings of some type of ghoulish discontent, which you guys had actually heard from um uh cutter's old imperial group too when you killed the last necromancer there he said that you know things were starting to hit the fan and they were starting to look for other ways to gain power because they felt like the vampires were kind of taking advantage of the alliance 
So he said, while you're hunting down the Red Winter, if you hear anything about you know this ghoul discontent, track that down too. Here's a magic mirror. You can contact me once a week. Go, start in Zobek. So you guys are like, shit, we just left Zobek. So you go back to Zobek through the same portal to go to the Cloven Nine. The Cloven Nine says, oh, you're back. Guess what? We have our favor that you had, you know, that we had got from you guys using our portal before. We're calling it in. Sam was gone for a couple of days. So Cordelia was sent on a separate side mission where she ended up having to, uh, we'll hear about that story later. Yes. Um, and but then the rest of the party was sent to help some co- the help the kobolds of Zobek. The kobolds are a really big group in Zobek, um, really important. But the whole city had turned against them because all these people started going missing, and they blamed the kobolds. So you and 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 the Cloven Nine didn't like that. They don't like this animosity. They need the kobolds and they need the people. So they said, "Fix this for us." You met a kobold king. The kobold king basically said, "We tracked the last killer. You know, my kobold tracker." follow tracks down into the catacombs, you guys need to go down there and find out what's going on. So you head down in, you find some ghouls, you find some zombies, you find some other things, but eventually you find these this ghoul and this Red Winter sister talking about turning some consoles, which are basically senators of Zobek. Um, you hear about the cult of forbidden ecstasies. You hear about this, this um, that they're trying to draw like the eyes away from from um, the north down towards the Marodi. Um, you hear about all of this and then you follow the Red Sister to this uh, temple, the temple for the Cult of Forbidden Ecstasies. You battle an ogre, you open the door, you see what's going on and there's some type of um, mission or there's some type of uh, sacrificial thing happening. You see this missing um, Zobat girl on this altar um, you see um, uh, all these necromancers or all these like mages surrounding her. You see Felixia, you know, casting this magic, this purple smoke going around. And you see like 15 people in front of this just watching. So then uh, Sylvester decides to do something. I polymorphed into a great ape and went ape shit just started wrecking shit. Um, but as soon as the Great Nate bursts into the room, one of the random people watching suddenly threw off their cloak, and that happened to be... Me! Cordelia, through some whatever during her side quest, ended up getting lo- like tied into this cult of forbidden ecstasies. So she just bust out in this gold ball gown with her two swords and started wrecking. And so, a Celine Dion song. Yeah. So basically, they spend the entire session murdering everyone, including the consul of Zobek um, and Felixia. Um, they, uh, there was some stuff that you guys missed down there that I talked about on the fret stream. Um, oh. But what you didn't know, when you, um, as a great ape, followed that one cultist into that room and couldn't find him, yeah. No one, no one checked for a secret door. There was a secret door. Yeah, you were a monkey. Yeah, there was. A I mean, I kind of did. I was tearing the room apart looking for something, yeah. but I was an ape, so there's you that. You didn't, you didn't find it. Um, <laughs> yeah, obviously. And behind that door huh? was a teleportation portal that would have taken you right back to Zobek, like right back out of the catacombs. So gotcha. again, if we weren't going on stream, I would have had you fight your way out of the catacombs again, and it would have been a whole thing. And then at the end, I probably would have been like, oh yeah, there was a teleportation circle. It was but like we the were... 27th session yeah. in our first dungeon. Yeah, right. we were going on stream. That wasn't the first dungeon. Wasn't it? No. Oh, I guess well, caves. I guess we were in caves. Yeah. 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 And, so, and even then, uh, you were still in catacombs. It's not like you've even been in a real dungeon. Oh. I think the thing closest would have been the blood vaults. I mean... Well, the blood uh, vaults, and then where we followed the ghouls, Jason's old crew. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah we've oh, had... The mushroom, uh, the mushroom but place. no legit, like, dungeon dungeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm not... Cool. Yeah. I, you haven't seen any dragons either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you guys it's do all that. Oh, yeah. You guys ran away from the Beholder in episode... Way back. Yeah, it was back there. Yeah. Right before um, we killed... 
And then that is kind of where we, we are, where we caught up. You guys, you save okay. the girl, Roz, really cool. and then you get her back to the Cobalt King, and then we started the next stream. Um, Wait, what did Eric say? I was oh, gonna say really cool. quick, a little thing that for my character, if people start watching, uh, my reveal back when we uh, went, we captured the princess, and went back to Rodeon, everybody found out that I wasn't just some random guy traveling through the forest. I was actually sent by Rodeon, and I have a completely different name, not Sylvester Aldred, but and a voice. Far, yeah, and a different voice and everything. Yeah. Um, and then they kind of asked me about that, and I pooped it a little bit. Um, and that was that. Yeah, so basically when Rodeon went in, he was like, ah, Hamish. And we're like, You know, I, I see you found them. Good job bringing them here. Uh, and suddenly right. Hamish had this like southernish kind of accent that was like, oh yeah, no problem, boss. Yeah, so. Yeah, more of a um, southern, southern draw. Yeah, so that was a fun little reveal. Every Everyone gets good reveals and his was no different. Um, so that's kind of where we got to. So, um, so let me talk about daggers real quick. For those that don't know, what I always have with all of my players is I always ask for two or three daggers. And a dagger is something from a character's backstory that they give to me that I sharpen and stab them with later, much like Atticus. But it's always like it's always like an open thing. So in one of our other games, um, Eric played um, this other character who part of their backstory was they, I think you stole something from a thieves guild in Zobek. Um, and oh, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after some, some sessions and stuff, the party ends up making their way back to Zobek. And that thieves guild, the leader of that thieves guild had actually the, the, the guild itself had fallen apart, and he had actually got a job with what's basically the secret police of Zobek, the Spyglass Guild. Mm -hmm. um, and the party, um, like, at an, basically, I had asked sessions and sessions prior, I was like, here's some NPCs just in case we run into someone or whatever, here's a picture of this guy, blah, 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 blah. So then when the party ran into this group, and the guy, I was like, oh yeah, and the leader looks like this. And no one at the time knew yet or whatever. And Eric was like, uh, like in character was like, oh shit, fuck, 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 fuck. And then I just kept going. I just kept going, didn't say anything, didn't do anything. And that was his dagger coming back to stab him. And then eventually he was just like, hey, by the way, I know this guy, he hates me, I did this, this sucks. And like a session or two later, you ended up killing him, which was great. So it was, there was an early dagger that kind of pulled the party back in. So a dagger is just a, a, it's an open-ended part of a, of a of a backstory where the the player doesn't know what happens because of that dagger. It could be someone that they wronged in the past. Um, it could be a family member that they lost and don't know what happened to them. It could be an item that disappeared. It could be any number of things, and they but they don't know what happened to it. So then I get to write it in because what I like to do with my campaigns is I have a main story arc, but I'll have these mini arcs that weave through it. So like when we when we met Cutter's old hunting party. I, you know, that was his backstory coming back into it. When we, every, when Sabine popped up, when when um, uh, Sarah Roxley popped up, that's Sam's backstory. Um, oh, we completely missed the whole part. Timbor asked Daryana oh, to, yeah. to call her As blood magic. Daryana to, to come meet him for breakfast because he wanted to talk about the blood magic items. Daryana had this really interesting book that apparently had blood magic involved with it. And Timbor said, hey, what would it take to, for me to buy that off you? And, and Daryana was like, it's not for sale. This is mine. So Timbor was like, huh, that's interesting. And he cast Time Freeze on her and, and took the book from her and was like, I was going to pay you for it. But since you didn't want to give it to me, um, my, my lady, my patron, um, the Countess um, Dolingen, yeah, really wants this. So I'm just going to take it you have a good one and teleports and leaves with what the party real finds out is what is her most prized possession. And she is not happy at all by this. Um, so that was- My dagger is, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. That was her backstory and uh, coming back to bite her in the ass. I was just gonna say that what I like to do with my daggers, not all of them, but is to leave oh. them to where I don't even know them. Right, so like with Toman, who was a yeah. Gear Forge bard in another campaign, I kind of gave these seats to Ryan, right? Where I don't even know 
what the out what it is, right? And same thing with Cutter. There's there's one that I don't even know what it is, but I just kind of planted the seed. So when Ryan actually, you know, makes it happen, I have no idea what to expect. Versus the very literal ones where, hey, I met a guy in this place and I, you know, stole his shit, and then so you kind of know that something's gonna come of that. But that's right. something I like to do because for me as a player, that's interesting to see it's what fun. Ryan does. Yeah. With, well. I did the exact same thing. So the previous one that he mentioned in the other campaign, that was the first time I was writing him daggers. So I was like, oh, I stole from this guy, maybe fucked over this guy. Yeah. But in this one, it was much more open-ended. Just like, here's people in my past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are much you know? more fun. Well, and for yeah. those of you that watched the last episode, um, if you haven't at least at least watch the whole fucking thing um <laughs> but at least watch the clip called um visions and choices where i uh, it's That'd from it's from the visions on the party they each um they all took their headphones off and i one on one each of them had this vision that they still have to figure out why they had it and what it means but in each vision they had to make a choice um and no one unless you guys watched the the is it VOD or VOD? What do you say? VOD. VOD. Unless you guys watch the VOD, you don't know what happened to the other people. I know. But some of things. your daggers um, and backstory bits were in the visions. Um, and uh, I don't want to give too much. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to say don't, too much. Don't, 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 don't. But no, they gotta it was watch. the most DK it was moment really, of Victor's it was really life. Watch it, but I'm just saying some of those daggers came back um, and and really, really made people make some really interesting choices. But on top of the visions and the choices, there was a skill check role involved with it too. The DC was very malleable based on how much information, what, what you guys gave me. Um, some people succeeded, some people failed. And regardless of the choice they made what happened after the choice was really affected by um the role what i really wanted was the choice though and how you guys feel about yourselves after the choice that you had to make so um Can anybody hear me? Hello, hello. No? Oh, man. Okay, so people can hear me, but nobody else. Second break for a sec, Ryan. I can't hear you. I can't hear him at all. Can anyone in the stream hear Ryan? You're right back, guys. Sorry.
All right, can anybody, anybody hear us? Hello, hello. Are we back on stream? Yeah, we're back. All right. Please say you can hear us. Yay, it's Yay. Yay! Sorry guys, my computer took a fart. What did what happened? Did Zoom just kicked it to a different outlet? I don't know. Yeah, it was weird. Uh my 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 Zoom mic was set and everything. All of a sudden it just clipped out. I could still hear the music, but I couldn't hear anybody's voices. So I don't know. Um I had Twitch chat floating around somewhere and now I can't find All it. Alright, we're now. back. Yeah, oh we're yeah, back. we're yeah, we got people on. Okay. We have more um, viewers than ever right now. <laughs> Yay! Welcome Yay. to our working audio. Yeah. That was a, a ploy to get more viewers. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> um, all right. So what we were talking about was um, was an evil campaign. Um, I've always wanted to run one. Um, I uh, And when we started the campaign, I, I really, really, really kept trying to reinforce, probably to an annoying point evil does not mean everybody has to be the joker you don't need to be this chaotic psycho you don't need to be like pillaging and raping and like murdering kitties and stuff like that that's not evil like when you look at the world like jeff bezos is fucking evil you know what i mean like and i doubt he's murdering that many people um so it comes down to a couple of bad choices it comes down to how you grew up it comes down to a lot of things and especially in this world like you know, Cordelia and Sylvester are both Dampiers. So the odds of them, you know, they're kind of like tieflings in, in regular D&D. Like tieflings aren't evil to start with, but they get treated like shit for so long that a lot of times they can be like a rogue or a charlatan or something. Because when you're treated badly long enough, you start to retaliate against those kind of things. Um, yeah, not murdering people directly. I, he hunts people for sure. Okay, we um, move past that. <laughs> Oh, no, Twitch isn't on by Amazon, so we're good. Um, but anyway, so Sam uh, is Dampier. She grew up in Morgau in a cultivated Dampier bloodline. You know what I mean? Like, Victor is a human, is a death cleric who was an orphan who was brought up by kind of like an evil group of people, you know? Yeah. Jason is a Darakul. So, I mean, he literally has to eat human beings to live. Thank you for the follow, Havoc. Um, and um, I'm not going to get too deep into Dariana's backstory, but when she's rubbing blood on like it's oil of Olay, something happened somewhere along the way. Um, but basically... When you did the introduction for Dariana last, when we streamed, you, every part of her introduction was stuff I did not know. Yeah. Like her race class and subclass. Yes. I was just like, all of that was new information. I had to go because to the Midgard It's been book. mysterious for a while. And even if you look in the Midgard book, you won't find her subclass. So well, that's like those back, the little character stories I was trying to do. I'm like, Dariana, I'm like, oh, shit. I is, she? Yeah. is it part of your Aerodol stuff though too? Cause I thought it sounded a little bit. That's no. Not. That's all Cobalt Press, baby. Baby. Um, so he did a good job not knowing that much about her. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> it's much better than my we'll, description. We'll be posting Eric's wonderful, wonderful writings about character descriptions into the Discord. So, so I found uh, Sam, there's a do max throw that length. Link in real quick? Um, there's a max length for um, one message size. So I have to put them in. I'll have to put them in a separate because I just had them all as one message for me. Gotcha. Is there a character limit? Do you know what that limit is? It was like two thousand something. Oh, total. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just do a separate. Um, yeah, join our Discord. Join I put Discord. a picture of my cat using the Cordelia filter in our Dark Kingdoms channel. Oh, if you ever want to talk about Dark Kingdoms, it better at least have fangs or something on it. But anyway, so so the so the evil campaign, I, the characters have all done such a good job of being evil in in a way that they still exist in a world that makes sense. You know, like they can still obviously if they travel to, I mean, even through Zobek. You know, they live right next to a vampire kingdom, so occasionally seeing a Darakul or seeing something like that is not insanely out of the norm. And with the things that they've done, you know, when you really think about D&D &D and writing campaigns and stuff, what is the difference between a group of people uh, being asked to go find this magic gem to save this princess who's under a spell versus a group of people that were sent by a necromancer to go find this evil gem so they can put this princess under a spell. It's still a fucking fetch quest, you know? But it's all of the atmosphere you put into it and it's all of the the other things. And the other the other part of it is the characters buying into 
you know, if, if some of the stuff that we've said along the campaign was said like session one, I feel like people would have been like, wait a second, you know, like what we were talking about earlier with Justin's character, that's a perfect piece of art for him to be like, what the fuck is going on? Because yeah. Cordelia's, you know, again, you save all of these people and then Cordelia bites ones and kills it. Cutter cuts the face off one of the dead bodies. Victor, you know, if he was there, would have turned one of the heads into a skull. Jess, you know, Daryana is playing in a puddle of blood, rubbing it all over her body. And that is an evil campaign. You know, it's, it's, it's people making choices that a hero wouldn't make and people living a backstory that's not a hero's backstory. And that's an evil campaign and it's not hard. Everything I read online of like, you can't run an evil campaign because it's just gonna go to shit after three sessions because everyone's gonna be crazy. Like, it's not, it's just not well, how it is. I know? think it's also a lot, it's also perspective. Yeah. You know, it's, history's written by the victors. So who determines what's good and what's bad? I mean, obviously we're playing it up a little bit more than that, but realistically, I mean, you know, the United States well, to Native Americans, we're fucking evil. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's, all it's all relative. It's all relativity. And that's and that's what I I really wanted to again push in the beginning is evil is such a just like this fuzzy, fat, gray line. Yeah. You know? I mean, even when, think of think of paladins, you know, in, in regular D D. If your god tells you to do something and you go and you murk fifty <laughs> goblins, you know, because your god said to do it, you're a hero, right? But what if all those fifty goblins were just trying to live their life? And suddenly you tweak that story and say it's an anti-paladin and it's 50 people. Why is that any different? You know, it's just perspective. It's just relativity. And and just like the real world, not to get too existential in this, like Eric just said, evil is just this, it's, it's all relative. It's all relative, you know? I mean, Aladdin stole bread to feed himself and his monkey. Was he a bad guy? No, he was a prince in the end. So... You know it yeah don't you find it a little bit interesting now too that like playing in this campaign <laughs> at a time where you you can definitely feel the whole country kind of convulsing and and rethinking everything you know and i moved to california and i was like oh we don't celebrate columbus day and then you start thinking about oh he fucking started the transatlantic slave trade and you know it you get into oh, it and you're well, like well you know i mean yeah, because somebody the other day was asking me about Victor's stuff, and I said, I said, you know, honestly, I don't think Victor is doing anything different than some of the Catholics did. I was raised Catholic. Catholics did, you know, hundreds of years ago, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they just believed it was everything. the right thing. So again, like, so an evil campaign, especially when it comes to D and D, is relativity. But it's also about. I think one of the most important things to period. One of the most important things is picking the right people to be in a campaign like that with you you need people that are going to be first of all great role players are going to buy into what's being done so when i i didn't just announce like hey i want to run an evil campaign i was like hey sam hey matt hey jason hey you know eric you know um and you know um my buddy ricky um who's in chat right now not quite dead yet was actually at the zero session two came in late um but you know i i really wanted to pick people that were really going to buy in and i think Sam has been in no no other campaigns with me, but Jason and Eric have been in like every game I've played. They were in this game, they were in my other Midgard game, they were in Curse of Strahd with me. So when I started um, Dark Kingdoms, I was like, I won Jason, I won Eric, I gotta have these guys. I had recently played with Matt when we um, actually play tested for Empire of the Ghouls. Our names are in the book. Oh no, I um, was in that game. I was in that yeah. game with Matt. Yeah, and Sam was there too. And then, um, and oh shit, we got it right. Mad bird streams, thank you so much. Um, we, we'll see it in retrospect, but yeah, the only gift we use is the running zombie when we get raided. So, <laughs> um, but hi, um, we're we're gonna be wrapping up soon. But we're talking about why, um, how fun it is, and how we go about running an evil D and D campaign. Um, but but again, a lot of it is just choices, and as a DM. <laughs> It's what I was just saying was it's about the people you pick. And I could not have picked a better group of people to run this campaign for. Everyone buys in so hard. Everyone RPs so hard. I can throw everything I've ever wanted to, um, ever wanted to play in a game at them. Um, and 
and everyone just takes it in stride and keeps going. Um, even after some character death, even after we bring some new people in. And Jess coming in at the time, um, Jess was running in my Midgard campaign too. And I really wanted to bring her on as a guest, just for Andy to come out. Um, but then once, you know, I kind of came to the realization, why not we just keep her, has been such an amazing addition to the party. Like Daryana is, like it just fits with the rest of the group so well especially Daryana again drive me fucking nuts yeah just so mysterious and, and again when she had, starts rubbing blood all over herself and yeah. everybody else i've kind of got figured out but her i just don't yeah and it's fucking but with jess it's like jess is quiet Dylan. for most of the session <laughs> and then but when she nowhere. says something drops bombs it's like ever yeah. like it's just it's, it's always good and it's just like it's either a dad joke or this like gruesome piece of rp where you're just like wait <laughs> what who what? are you yeah yeah and, mad, um, Bird, mad bird streams definitely very story based very heavy role play oh, yeah that's that's kind of like what i live for in, yeah, for in sure. these, these kind of games and i think everybody here does and, i i if yeah. i didn't need to i wouldn't even have dice we would just have group storytelling sessions yeah the one person you're missing is um, is Andy, who plays our yeah. our, our gnome beat him, and <laughs> oh, he fucking crushes it too. He, I mean, he's right. the best. Yeah. He's, he's got to be the fan favorite. Oh, so, he uh, is. He's a hundred percent fan favorite. The Andy. baby he's... definitely was. Um, yeah. Well, and so. I, I play, but I'm a fan. And yeah. No offense to everybody else here, but. Oh no, I agree. And, and if I agree, then that's that's the basic. You, you guys all things we kind of skipped when we we're going through our history of our. Oh, you guys are so kind. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, mm. Where's my back? Mm. But um, <laughs> I mean, I, I can't pick a favorite character because I know so much more about each of you than you guys know about each other. And every part of it, you know, when when people were giving me backstory and daggers, and I got to like maybe like tweak it a little bit to be like, this fits a little bit better. It's just like, this is so good. Like the stuff that I know about Daryana, the stuff that I know about Sylvester. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I, I've never run a campaign. First of all, this long, we've been playing for over a year. Our year anniversary was in September sometime, September 4th. Yeah. So we've been playing for over a year and you guys have gotten a total of four levels. Um, yeah, then that's my fault. We'll go for no, that's good. Now. Um, no, no, I don't. I don't play to go up yeah. in levels. Like, I enjoy the Slow game. Burn. Well, well after, I think, after right there is a D and D sweet spot. I was yeah. listening to where it's like five to ten. Five to ten. That, well, that's, that's kind of like, yeah. yeah. Once you guys hit ten, I don't really care. I mean, I'll love you guys as you go, but it's really just gonna be a little <laughs> bit more HP and and you don't. No one really gets the feature to like fourteen. So from ten to fourteen or ten to seventeen, there's not a whole lot going on. Can Can I throw um, one thing out, Ryan? Like one thing that I love that I've learned from the players here, and I think especially Eric leans into this a lot, is so Ryan has this mechanic with the red cards and the blue cards. Oh, yeah. And, and Eric loves the red cards. Yeah. And and I find myself, I play differently now, and even in different too. games. And we're like, a, yeah. it doesn't matter what you roll. And I know when I was a kid, when I played, you know, you want a 20 every time. Failure and, uh, is better storytelling, to yeah. be perfectly honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? so, Thank you guys for kind of helping so, me evolve. So talking about the blue and the red cards, um, these are from Nord Games. They're called, um, well, when I bought them, they were called a luck deck, but I think they're called like Fates and Fortunes now, I think the deck is called. But basically when we're playing, um, if the characters, these are for ability checks. Um, do we do it for saving throws? I don't think we do. I think we do. Uh, it, 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 it depends. I don't know if it's ever come I up. Think. It says on the card, like if you can or not. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, if you get a good card, if you roll a nat twenty on an ability check, doesn't mean you automatically succeed. Yeah. But you do succeed at getting a blue card, and a blue card might be like succeed on your next skill check or a skill check. Um, and then if you get a nat one, you could get a card that says until the end of your turn, attacks of opportunity against you are made with advantage. Um, and then when we play, there's actually little tokens. Um, uh, that mark if you have a good card or a bad card, um, and then I can use those good cards, bad cards against you. And just like what um, what Matt said earlier, uh, when his first character Dre died, he uh -huh. was trying to stealth past this blood ooze, and he succeeded by a point. And then I had roll a one d four and subtract yeah. that from a saving throw, so he actually failed. And then the blood ooze critted him, and he yep. died by one <laughs> HP because it went. Oh, 
like double his maximum hit points. I got slapped. Um, and that was based on the cards. So the cards are fantastic and I love playing those. Yeah. And if and when we get to affiliate and you guys can actually use your cheer points and stuff, you're gonna be able to buy um, or four um, cards for players or be able to take those cards away from players at, at, within reason. Um, so uh, it's really fun um, to do that. But long story short, I mean, I've, I've never played in a, in a campaign that I'm, I'm happier to, to prep for and to be in every week. I've never played in a campaign that's run this long. I have all the way to level 20 plus planned out and I'm hoping we get there. Um, and and that's it. I just, I couldn't be happier with the players that I have, with how the campaign has gone. There's very few things that will really change. And now we get to actually play for other people. Um, so we appreciate everybody that watches, so. I had, a, I had an interesting conversation about like when COVID is in the rear view mirror, I don't think the genie is going to go back in the bottle. Like I think people are going to prefer the in-person because it's so nice, but I think it's going to be a hybrid of both because there's things we can do here that we oh couldn't do when we were The face filters to face. and the backgrounds and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, we'll definitely talk about what we want to do. And I think it really depends on, I mean, for me, I think it really depends on how the stream is going. You know, if we have a lot of people watching us, we, we can try to figure out another way to do it, but. We got a question, uh, Havoc790 asked, or how far away from affiliate are we? Um, How many followers do we have right now? I think we, we got a couple 45, tonight. 46. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're just, we're real close. I think we only need, um, we need less than five followers um, and we just need to hit seven streams and this will be our fourth. Um, so within a 30 day period, if we have three more streams, which I'll be running at least two next week, I'll be running another DM session um, and I'll be running a um, our, our next Dark Kingdoms game on Wednesday. Um, oh, thank you so much, Knight Knight. I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, so realistically, uh, I know that Andy, the math magician, our fantastic moderator, um, is thinking about running a session next Sunday. So depending on how it works out, if we hit seven streams and we get two more followers, um, as soon as it reads that we've met all four things, we'll be affiliate. So, and we've only run, we run one game each of Dark Kings and Missa Midgard. I've run one DM prep and now we're doing a recap and we're at almost 50 followers and, and stuff like that. So I know that Andy, um, Evil Andy in stream has a Theros game plan with me and Sam and Jimmy. Um, and um, and then I know that Andy the Math Magician, who let's do a real quick plug for Andy the Math Magician. He is running Rhyme of the Frost Maiden over on the Guild of Trolls channel. Um, and uh, it's fantastic um and he actually did um a dm prep session for that today that i i i listened in on and then also watched because i don't want to hear too much of it because i might want to play it sometime yeah. um but he also I runs the prep the sessions. Of the day is good yeah, yeah so good um so you know follow any math magician for his dm prep streams and check out the guild of troll um where we actually got a bunch of people to um you know that watch them start watching us too because um, Andy the Math Magician is kind of uh, across both streams. So check out him for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, we hit, hopefully we're going to hit affiliate pretty quick. I mean, it could be within two weeks and then we'll just keep growing from there. But I really think, you know, in the games that we played, I think that the, the filters help. I think having the background helps. I think the RP heavy aspect of the games really helps kind of draw people in. So um, the lenses, which we're not wearing really right now. Yeah, well, why doesn't everybody yeah, come on, guys? Whatever. What, what other campaign has that? Why don't you throw your Dark Kingdoms lens on? I can't use mine for some okay. reason. My Snapchat. Oh, you know what? Am I even using Snapchat? Right? I don't have mine on yet. Yeah. But I will Wednesday. I'll be ready. Yeah. But we all have character yeah, lenses, good. so. And. So, you know, we look like our characters. We really try to RP our characters super hard, especially in Dark Kingdom. Especially, that was another <laughs> thing I, that's another thing I meant to say. When we yes. went online, um, I decided to do a lot less, um, I decided to do a lot less combat and a lot more and really, really, really push the RP super hard. And did, I even said, hey guys, listen, there's gonna be less combat. So if you feel us like, a second like fill that like be your characters really rp and everyone was like oh yeah fuck yeah let's do this and it's been so great i mean there's times where we do three four sessions in a row with no combat you know 
Um, so, and it's just, just hard RP um, and it's fantastic. So yeah, please watch the, uh, watch the VOD that's up on YouTube on our Twitch for the last session. It's a really, really good first session. Um, Jay Miller was there for that. Um, it was, uh, that was another one of those where I was like, I need to do something interesting and, and really cool, like the story from Plusire to Zobak or, or something like that. So let's do something a little different. And it, it really hit, I think, really well. Um, so yeah. watch that. Watch us this coming Wednesday. You'll see the next session of Dark Kingdoms. Um, Sam and Jason and Jess um, are with um, are with me and Doug on uh, Myth of Midgard every other Wednesday. Um, so yeah. Um, it is nice to have some feature of the stream to catch your eye. Yeah, you know, and I I made the 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 overlay too, and I think that that's okay looking. I'm happy with that. I think we we look like we know what we're doing, even though we've only been doing it for two weeks. Um, so it's it's nice, um, and I'm I'm hopefully getting a little bit smoother with some of the intros and some of the talking, and not um, getting lost in my own, my own gibber every now and then. But um, Oh yeah, Jay Miller's East Coast. That's what sucks about starting at seven is, uh, you know, when we go for three hours, it starts to get pretty late. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, we really appreciate you tuning in. Um, so thank you so much. Um, what else? What else do we have to say? I mean, I, I, that was exactly what I was talking for. That was super fun. Um, I, I forgot half of that, so it was really Honestly, nice. Honestly, yeah. Amazing to go through that. I totally forgot so much, and then as oh, we're yeah. going through, I'm like, oh my god, yes, that was fantastic, and. Yeah, a lot of memories. Well, like you yeah. said, we've been going, doing this campaign for over a year. Over a year. So. Well, and not only that, we we streaming. We're switching to every other week, so I can run the Miss Midgar game too. But we played every week for the last like months and months and months. We played every Wednesday. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, if I wasn't also starting uh, PDT, if I wasn't also starting um, uh, Miss Midgar, we'd still be running Dark Kingdoms every week. Um, you know, and one of the reasons I wanted to start Myths was so that we could have, a, you know, some variety on stream um, mixed in with our Theros campaign, too. Um, but then, you know, Andy is uh, a little bit busy at work, so we'll be starting that up hopefully within, you know, maybe four or five weeks. Um, but, you know, and unfortunately, I work night shift and I have to go back to work after I've been out since March. Um, so I can't stream two nights because if I work day shift, I totally would. I would stream every night but I lose three nights a week having to go into work. Um, so I only have four nights left. I have to, you know, I stream Wednesdays. I have to spend some time with my wife because I'd like to keep her. Um, so, you know, she did give me a kidney, so I, I kind of have to keep her around and make her happy every now and then. There's nothing more DK than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, so, but I'm, I'm having a great time on stream. Um, little bit of, a little bit of fear right before we start every single time um but it's been fun um we, we need a blooper roll of like you cursing into the mic while it's muted <laughs> yeah i'll just record myself on my yeah. side so you can hear. i think in chat somebody has to clip every time ryan accidentally mutes himself so that we can have like a montage of ryan going like he gets a red card like we get to give him a red card or something. yeah the dm red card <laughs> yeah was, uh, you get to every time i don't um unmute myself you guys can take away one of your red cards <laughs> Well, that's no fun, yeah. right, Eric? No, no, no. You gotta have the that, we got that on record, it sounds like. No, <laughs> we're just kind of discussing possibilities here. Um, and Evil um, Game's definitely been interesting. I think as far as all of our players go, I was the least prepared. Yeah. Like, no, least equipped. me. I'm, well, on, so, well, well, both well, you, both Matt and, and uh, yeah. Sam. So Matt and I are just such Delightful. <laughs> well, Sam is a, Sam is a whip. And this, I had trouble with your thing because you'll do these horribly barbaric things, but really, don't make pancakes. Stuff oh, God. To, to some, just some genuine kindness, which is basically just you shining through your character. Oh, yeah. But it's like, uh, it's, which is great. <laughs> Exactly even, even, even just as a thing. person, I mean, I, when I work night shift, you know, I still, I, like I said, I work night shift, so a lot of times I'd be waking up at like 5 o'clock, 5.30, barely pulling myself together to start, you know, running the game, and every single session, Matt would show up with some type of coffee for me, like a Starbucks coffee oh, yeah. or something, 
Uh, you gotta love got your DMs up. Yeah. Bottle of wine before. I mean, Eric gave me the the um, cipher rule book on DM day. I mean, yeah. I couldn't ask for a better party. I mean, top to bottom, you know. So, you know, but yeah, Sam Sam was, was a huge wimp when we started, and I feel like well, so... I feel like she's really found her evil stride and really not only that, I think that of all the characters so far, because half of them are dead, um, Cordelia has had the most character growth. I, I feel agree. like some shit. She has said some fucked up shit. I mean, her, her, her only friend was murdered in front of her. That was a little bit more recent. But like, she almost died when the zombie horde had her. If Tongue Taker wouldn't have dragged her out, and she was a bitch to Tongue Taker before that, and he still saved her life. So you know, the the arc of Cordelia has been, I think, my favorite to watch as a player because you can tell she was just like, she basically came off as just like an angsty like. I don't know, gothy she's e-girl. She's a petulant child. She's yeah. a pet spoiled child. And I just feel like she's oh, really... <laughs> oh, thank you for the follow. I think I think we might be one away. So thank you so much, Josh. Somebody go Josh make a wall. Twitch account and follow And us. just follow. <laughs> I already got Kaylee to follow. So I got as many accounts as I can. Um, but but I really think the character of the Cordelia has come the farthest. I think, I think the events, I think the zombie almost killing her really grew up a little bit. I think almost dying in the blood bolts and Cutter, you know, waking up to Cutter wearing Sister Akaba's face with a dagger to her throat saying basically like, grow the fuck up and just do the goddamn job. I think, I think Dejana, I think, yeah, you know, Roxley and Sabine, I think Atticus dying. I think there's just been this amazing character growth and she definitely is still like, you know, kind of chatty and really sarcastic, but that kind of like petulant child stuff is really kind of, I think, just been like washed away in blood. I think um, she drank it away at that t the tavern where she got crunk and like danced. Oh yeah, things. I spent a whole session. Like, yeah, we got fifty guys. Uh, yeah, thanks, hey. Hey. I think that's fifty. Hey. Hey. Yeah. So, <laughs> that was a I want to dance with somebody. somebody. Woo. Oh yeah, yeah, I spent a whole session because I lost the, uh, the archery tournament. And Ryan kept saying, like, do you want to get, like, giving me chances, like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm still drinking at a bar. And every time it cut back to me, I just played, like, just different music. And it was, I sat out almost the whole session just because I'm like, Cordelia, yeah. this is what she would do. But it's, yeah. I think it's hard, not just as Cordelia, but as Sam, like, adjusting to, I, I like to think that I've done well. But then we had a session where, Cor like, Cutter went to do something and Cordelia, like, sat and picked flowers and made, like, a daisy chain crown. And it's like, that's not evil, but Wasn't you know, that, not every second well, has to be yeah, evil. That's, but that's the thing, that's an evil campaign and that's evil people. Not every second of your life has to be like punching babies in the face. Like, you know, you can be like, you can even Hitler be mostly, yeah, you can be mostly a good person. I mean, even if you think about something like a, like a conquest paladin, you know, like the difference between lawful good and lawful evil really, like if, if there was any line thinner between lawful good and lawful evil Just that's lawful it right part. there you know what i mean lawful. um so it, it's it's you don't always have to be evil to be evil in an evil campaign again like just by your very nature you 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 charm people with your predatory nature and you bite their you bite them and drink their blood to to recover hit points you know and and you're working for the 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 king of vampires you know, after you kidnapped, who was basically a princess, you know, of another kingdom. I mean, and you can still pick flowers too. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, well... it's, it's definitely, I know Jason doesn't love as it. As long as the flowers bleed when you pick them. No, yeah. well, so then oh, I God. made it and then Victor asked for it. I gave it to him and he smashed it with his hammer. <laughs> but like, I, I'll go back, I'll go back. The perfect, perfect scene was Eric's scene. That demonstrates, yeah. I think, how to play an evil character, but not seem like punching babies in the face. I think yeah. that was the easiest one to kind of understand the concept, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna say too, I really enjoy the Cutter Cordelia. <laughs> yeah. Cool and water I mean, break. it kind of makes the the game okay. yeah yeah there i think that's like what helps is like couple. we all have these interesting dynamics you yeah. know and that's really the key is like if we were all the same if we were all like cutter or all like beat him oh. or all like right any it'd just be too stale yeah. yeah exactly 
Well, and what was funny was that uh, Cutter recognized that there were, Cordelia was out a few episodes. And who, who was the biggest talker? You know, Cutter, yeah. Cutter. you know what it reminded me of? You know what it reminded me of? It was fucking Parks and Rec after Jerry <laughs> retires. You yeah. have to have a Jerry. And then as soon as Cordelia wasn't there, everyone was like, well, how the, why the fuck is Jason talking so much? Um, <laughs> And I think I think Sylvester called it out, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I was yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. I was kind of like, also too. Um, you're always giving her shit about like we're gonna be on the job, the job, yeah. the job. But the second we come across your old crew, we're going. Yeah. That <laughs> shit. We're immediately on the well, side. That, that's <laughs> yeah, that's the point, right? Is yeah. like, uh, you know, people can be hypocritical when they're tied up to oh. some emotion. I think with Cutter too, like, there is a shred of what he used to be in there yeah and it just kind of pulls in the direction that's why i didn't want to even though most of the time he is kind of one way you know especially last session when ryan starts seeding in more backstory um and i don't know if i made the decision that you didn't think i was going to make but that's you know what i'm trying to do with the character and like make it more dynamic and have more layers I didn't listen. I still haven't listened to anybody's thing. So, full I'm not admission, gonna... I, I, I did because I just am such a fan of you guys, and I it was it was the best. Like like when you guys killed Alcava and I listened to it, it was good and I had chills and stuff. But it was like Ryan at his peak, and like everybody would took it so seriously, but like just did what the character would do, not what would make you feel good or not what might help you in a meta sense yep. it was so cool yeah. i think that's what makes it so and, cool is everyone like it thinks of it from that perspective yeah. rather than you know a lot of standard D, D games you might play where people are playing it like a game yeah. you know they're thinking about mechanics only and like hey what's the best character build or you know that way whereas like kind of almost like looking at it from the outside but i think when you look at it through your character that's when things get really cool yeah I agree. And the, the other thing, too, is um, like as far as playing an evil character, I mean, it's like good characters do bad things all the time. Oh, yeah. So evil characters can do good things all the time as well. You know, so you don't have it's and that's the trick, I think, too, is not getting typecast into this. Oh, I have to be evil all the time. And like you said, Jason, like punching babies in the face. That's not that's not the point. Well, haven't yeah. we've inadvertently wiped out some evil evil people that has probably helped midgard in general you know like by mistake for so, sure and it wasn't even by mistake we didn't like them yeah 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 you know it was totally i, I wouldn't say it was by mistake we blatantly wanted to get rid of those <laughs> yeah like in when we went to the blood vault like we like when the babushka asked us like go save our people we said no and then you know yeah. When we went out there, we didn't try to, we didn't go like, oh, let's kill all these people. Yeah. It was just, we helped the ones we helped, that it wasn't an inconvenience to us. Yeah. And we let them go. Yeah. And so we didn't come here, like, with the intention of saving them. That's what, I feel like if we were the good party, it was like, oh, well, we'll go we save did. them. But we did save them. Yeah. What's, what's oh interesting God. about yeah. the uh, the Alcava adventure, and again, for people who came in late, uh, this is run in Cobalt Press's Midgard setting. And um, prior to finding Cobalt Press, I homebrewed everything because I just really didn't like playing a lot of the stuff that D&D put out. But the stuff that Cobalt Press puts out is so fucking good. And the, the whole um, Blood Vaults of Sister Alcaba is its own um, module that Cobalt hey, Press put up? out. What's up? Can I put up the book? Yeah, go for it. Uh, this is our, uh, oh crap, green screen stuff going on here. But uh, it's the Midgard. Mid yeah, Eric has the uh, Cedar it, edition. So Eric, do you know what's funny is like- It's a magical book. When I ordered that those books, right? I was on the beach at Avila and my, my old man mm -hmm. thumbs, I pressed it twice and ordered them. And they're so expensive now. Like they're crazy Avala? expensive. Thank you. Oh, there you go, the black one. That's oh. not Wolfgang, That's not send Ryan a uh, free shot. This is the, no, I uh, love the special Fontes. edition one. You know, I love I love almost everything about Cobalt Press. You know what kills me? No, uh, no it doesn't say anything. Nothing on the binding. They did the same thing for the Deep Magic book too on the special edition. <laughs> um, the Deep Magic book is so good. Try so good. Oh my god! If you guys don't follow Cobalt Press seriously, like back their Patreon to start getting the Warlock booklets. Um, back, you know, uh, 
I don't think Source of Victory is in the stream tonight, but if you don't know Source of Victory, you have to look at Necropolis of the Mailed Fist and Tomb of Mercy. He run he he does these these tournament style modules that are just genius the way he thinks about the game and the lore the, the lore that he puts in. I mean, it's amazing. Um and uh Oh, which uh did you get um Jay Miller, did you get Toma Beast 2? Um I also got Tomo Beast 2 and the special no, no, no. edition and the bonds. Um the too much money. <laughs> um but, um, oh, it's so good. The PDF dropped today, too, if you got that, too. It's in your email. I tried to download it earlier, and Popo Press, like, crashed. But anyway, long story short, this is the Midgard campaign setting, and I don't remember why I brought that up. Sponsor us. Sponsor us? <laughs> oh. Sponsor. Yes. <laughs> even, even just drop, even just drop, be like, hey, watch this one. I'd be Can happy we got to do your thing, right? I tag everything at Cobalt Press and hashtag Cobalt Press to just be like, Senpai, notice me, like, please. Um, well, didn't that guy sent you a bunch of free swag, though? For oh, my God. So, so Source of Victory like, is not. I wish um, Sursa was here so we could talk. So oh we'll my clip God. all the good. Like, we're going to talk about how much we love Sursa, and then we can Well, clip I, it. I really, I really um, talked him up. He, we, he popped into my DM prep stream, and I just went off on how awesome he is. But go to SursaVictory.com, S E R S A. It's in there. Um, I, I tagged it. He, his trap book that he wrote, which is genius, called Testament of Malice, is free. Um, you got it. When you go to the bottom, read the um, read the interview he did with um, Arcane Library. He's done a bunch of podcasts with James Intercaso. I mean, it's so, just the way he thinks about the game is so intelligent. Um, he's also a programmer, so he, he remade this the 1980s Rogue game. I play it literally every single day. Um, it's so good. Um, on top and of he's that, he's just a great guy. Like he's, he's the awesome coolest guy. guy. So basically, long story short, when we were going to run the tournament Necropolis of the Mailed Fist for our meetup group, we had 20 people playing. This guy out of nowhere messaged me. He was like, "Hey, I know the guy that wrote that module. Here's his email." I emailed him. And he was like, "Hey, I love when people run my module. Here's a bunch of pre-gens that no one's ever seen before. Here's a bunch yeah. of maps that don't come with it. If you have any questions about the module, please let me know." And I did. I picked his brain like crazy about it. And on top of that, he gave us gift these. Basically, he gave us four twenty-five dollar gift cards to Drive Through RPG and DMs Guild, um, and then actually sent me like a file to print a gift card with that had like symbols from the module on it. And was just like, yeah, here's a hundred bucks. Here's a bunch of free stuff. Like, here's yeah. this. Just, just let me know how it goes. Um, so I think my next a little thing that I got tinkling around in my brain is. What I want to do is find um, three other streams that would like to run a tournament ver against us. Oh. Where we would have four simultaneous streams happening. We would swap the DMs and then oh. run and then run them and then run the tournament module at the time. It's like a three hour module or whatever. And then count up the points, you know, switch back, um, tally everything up, and then, you know, declare you know, a winner or oh. what happened across and then everyone would put the, the the VODs up so everyone could like switch between the streams live or watch the VODs later to actually have like a full tournament going. So I really think Gilded Troll probably would. Um, and then we just need to find two other streams um, and then um, we'll run uh, Tomb of Mercy as a module, you know, across streams, so. Can, can I ask a question of the other players? Yeah. Do you guys have a, your backup character in case of death? Nope. I got nobody. I, 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 I already do. hate I Sims. Oh, Sam does. I want to play him so bad. I was like, he's, honestly, I think he's, I made him. I made the character. I, I think he's level six. I hate him. I hate him. And no, you signed off on him, mostly. No, well, in, in, I mean, with the most reluctance I've ever signed off on anything. Honestly, if suits. anything happens to Cordy, this other I character really, is going to be. I really genuinely think that you made just a terrible character so that I wouldn't kill Cordelia. So it's just though. like, it's just- Life insurance policy. I have not. I uh, made a backup character and- Was Sylvester just like off the top of your head? No, and actually, so Sylvester was kind of a backup character. Okay. Uh, when, um, and this is the other thing about playing in an evil campaign was uh, Tom Caker was, dim and did evil things but i could play that type of character in any game yeah 
Yeah, yeah. So when he died, I wasn't necessarily heartbroken. It opened the door for me to play this character, which I think is the only opportunity I get to play this type of character. Yeah. Because uh, he, he's so manipulative and deceitful that he wouldn't really fit into any other... If I played with this character, if somebody else is playing this character in a normal game, I'd fucking hate that player, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, because he's like a Bond villain, yeah? Yeah, kind of, and just liar and yeah um but uh but i don't want to come up with a backup character be primarily because then you're thinking about that character and not invested in this character so i purposely yeah. am not creating another character because i want to be this character and if he dies then fine i'll come up with another character but i think if you have a backup you start thinking about oh how would i do that guy and how would that guy have reacted and it takes you out of your current character so is that it's your kind thought, of my Jason? reason for not really making. I typically don't make backups because I think it takes your investment out of that character. Your Sorry, original. what were you saying? I was just, just curious if that's kind of your thought process too. It's just there's no reason to muddle. Well, I mean, Cutter is just never going to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, he's already dead. He is immortal. He's already dead, right? I mean, what's what? What, 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 what can you no, do? No, I him? just, I just don't. Yeah, like I, like Eric saying, I don't, I don't like to think down the road. Like I, it takes you out of that you start to think ahead and like okay what's this character going to be like and i think your investment and in, uh who you're playing now diminishes. well so. for me the main reason i made a backup character is because i was getting actively stressed out about <laughs> dying like i don't i think i made her oh, like in the, real uh, life stress. yeah i think i made my backup after the alakava fight and i just oh, found i sam was getting heart. so Kept anxious going. and i <laughs> I was so stressed during that session when I thought I was going to die, like, and it was just for managing my own anxiety as a person. Huh. So like for you guys, you know, it takes you down a level of investment. I needed to take a level of investment down because I was getting actually stressed out because I've never really played in a game where I was concerned about my character dying because usually in the passage has been hand waved or, you know, whatever. Hmm. So I am very attached to Cordelia. Yeah, but you know that, that Alakama, choices have it, consequences of Ryan. Yeah, oh, so during 100%. that Alakama fight, I was so stressed out. Um, and that's the trick too is, and we know, we've seen it with Dre, Matt's original character, my original character, they go. Like yeah. that, both, both those deaths were pretty quick and uh, not necessarily terrible decisions either. It's just mm -hmm. the world. Those were some plucky boys clock but, bad. That well, it made it made it in, interesting, right? And like both of them, kind of, they died trying to be heroic, which is the opposite of. I wasn't even being heroic. I was checking a bush. Oh. <laughs> but. I thought you were trying to let the party run. Somebody just threw up a quick question about whether oh, yeah. there's genuine sketch risk. That's not just somebody. That's sketch risk. Our official artist, who we very shortly will be showing his initial sketches. Oh, on. nice. I've got oh, a couple oh, of the I color. I Can you make sure he, we have consent from him? I did. <laughs> I asked him. I, okay. I, I, I tweeted him earlier asking, if, and he said we could do whatever we want with him. So, okay. yes. So I'm actually going to be sending the link now um, to um, to Jason um, so that he can add this as another tab in the background of the map once uh, once we get ready to do that. So you don't have to do it right now. But, um but yes, that's a, really that's a really good question. That's a really good question. I'll address that a little bit. Um, I'm not going to address it from Sylvester Hamish's point of view, but my original character, Tongue Taker, um, I think generally was uh, cared about Matt's original character, Dre. Yeah, because they were buddies from the army. From the yeah, they from served the together, um, and slowly um, Cordelia. Um, Never really met uh, Jess's character, uh, Dariana. Well, did, but briefly. I don't think he ever fucking liked Cutter. <laughs> but who does? And and I don't think he liked yeah, being Cutter doesn't need either. Friends. But, you know, as a soldier. His friend you, stabbed him in the back. He doesn't it, need it, him. That's yeah, interesting yeah. that Jason says that, because I remember Sam telling me, oh, you got to meet Jason. He's the best role player you've ever met because every game the he best? plays, oh, man. every every game Love he plays, it. he's Love a completely it. different character. Yes, yeah. he doesn't. 
He doesn't bring I any threw of him. you off with hugs. Table. Huxley, didn't I? And, Hux and Huxley was a trip. Oh my god. Not not only not only is it a completely different character, but it's such deep investment in each character. You exactly. know what I mean? It's it's I Your mean and all the weak guy so well, first good. Of all, He's played oh, the Oh, the stutterer. Guy. He's yeah. played the best. I don't know this Huxley guy. I, I wasn't in that game, but the bard we were playing in the other Midgard game was one of my favorite bards. Oh, my God, Toman. Oh, my God. I'm so sad we didn't, like, oh, we could have just picked that back up. The what to, the, the stories that Toman wrote. Jason so created good. this character that he was a storyteller bard um, that would, between sessions, would write up this incredibly just poetic, awesome recap of every of what happened in the previous session from his character's perspective. Like, blew my mind every time I read them. They're all like, you know, 1500-ish words, I think. They were just, just, and it was so, like, it was so nice to be like, all right, stream is starting, or not stream, the game is gonna start soon. Let me read, you know, what Toman wrote. To, to remember what happened last time. Yeah. It was so good. It was a book. I print it each time. I yeah. print them out and I put them in my... I That's how up. deep the RP goes, is he's literally oh. in character <laughs> writing. Yeah. I keep a character folder for all my characters. Yeah, and I mean, it, it technically it ended on a on an arc completion, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I like, mean... It's, it's somewhat complete. Who knows what happened to Tom? Yeah, rest, you guys, but... you guys all walked through a uh, teleportation circle, one that yeah. another group has followed behind you on, and don't know what was going to happen next. So, well, actually, yeah. that was kind of interesting too. A nice combination of the worlds was there was um, from that group. There's repercussions in our world, the game we're playing here, the Dark Kingdoms. Oh yeah, um, yeah. for things that happened in Obad. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I and, think I think uh, for us, yeah, I'm, Eric, like because we played in this world before, it was cool to see the different dynamic, you know, playing an evil character from a good character mm. and even running into the same factions and all that. <laughs> yeah. It's been cool. Yeah. And and my character knows huh. about that book they were after originally and the yeah. other game. Yeah. Uh in Zobek. My character knew about that because the uh, Cloven Nine were involved and the offense is hired by them. So it was an interesting overlap. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, when you wrote, when you gave me your backstory, when you gave me your backstory, I loved that there was this tie in between the two campaigns. Like, that was, yeah. you know, and uh, you guys, I mean, who knows? I mean, the Miss game and the DK game, if you're in the same place at the same time, you might randomly see a party of, of people walking by. Well, Matt by asked me, he's like, that. does Freya, does yeah. Freya know Dejana? That's why I was, I was, like, I was watching your guys' stream, and I thought, man, that would be fucking awesome. <gasps> like they were like frenemies, you know, like yeah, because because so they're both blonde, next... they're both kind of tough. Freya one hundred percent knows that Dejana got kidnapped. She was yeah, because yeah. it's the biggest yeah. news in the kingdom, and it would be it would be, house it would be earth shattering. Yeah. So we, I think I told Matt like we'll probably work out the timeline of like kind of when it's happening, but I think that's really interesting. So Freya is my Myths of Midgard character who will be in the every other Wednesday from this. Uh, she's from Paranalia, and for those of you who've been here long enough to hear us talk about Paranalia, um, is where Dejana Sigurd was from. So she, I would love if like she knew her. Oh, knew you want, her. it's not even a question. Yeah. It would be like literally like, it would be, it would be like the princess getting kidnapped. I mean, it, it was close enough. She was literally like the up and coming, like they knew she was going far. They knew she was probably gonna lead the, the 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 white lions one day. I mean, yeah. she was like the like, you know, sliced bread, you know, coming up, and and she just fucking disappeared, you know. And they rode off towards her Athenian plains to try to get her back from Sinesh the White Eye. So, but yeah, looking in the wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah. And but the, what's great is I I think timing wise. Um, you heard this probably after you had already left Paranalia. Yeah, someone got from it. So. so you weren't there when it happened. You were actually out of Paranalia. Crossovers. Time, so. Yeah. <laughs> if I probably... would just stop having all of my favorite players, which ends up being the same players, like in multiple campaigns, I could have groups mingle, but I couldn't do it with Midgard and Dark Kingdoms. I can't do it with Myth and Dark Kingdoms. 
because half the players in each are all like you just have two different other. snap lenses you just snap yeah. lens it and... and but so when you're fighting yourself in your other game <laughs> yeah i know man i was i was thinking how cool a tillman lens would be oh god oh. but you'd have to have that do 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 like the <laughs> Because he would so it's not a damn steel yeah, drone. I had, I had a playlist being around him. he would cast his inspiration or, or his bardic inspiration. I had this like like steel drum sound. But yeah. then when he would do his cutting words, I had this like fax machine sound. I was like, Rrr! it's like a modem. It's an old school you modem. Know, like a modem sound. And that was yeah. the cutting words that would like stab into your brain. Was a modem noise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So. Okay. So. Here's the no, interesting thing. Wait, wait, wait. Back to the do characters care about other characters in the evil oh. camp? I don't think it's fair to necessarily ask the characters that are alive, um, but and that's why I referenced because we don't want to meta and give away like, oh, does Cutter really hate Sylvester right. or anybody else? But so Dre's dead. So when you're yeah, playing so, that so character, Lorena Drill, because of the the, the tra trauma, um, was always triggered by things. So Dre like loved Cordelia because observed like a, a woman who was actually like living like her full life even though like like part of her ego got in the way um like really like admired that and then um tongue taker right it was his buddy and i think tongue taker was kind of too dense to realize that his friend was was a woman um and then but like tongue taker like he loved tongue taker because tongue taker was like the giant uh, like sh like the that dog in the in the Swiss Alps, right? That brings the booze to you when you wreck him. Mountains. like, just yeah. trustworthy, and we'll yank you out of the zombie horde. We'll yank you out of the blood ooze. And that's what it was so classic that like when Dre died, J uh, Ryan was just like, yeah. So the doors open to the front of the tomb. Uh, Tongue kicker really had to go to the bathroom and didn't want to get in trouble desecrating in the tomb. So he's out taking a whiz, and like that's like when he when he died, right? And then yeah. Um, I think Dre at that point had just met uh, Dariana and and Dariana what's interesting is I learned more about Dariana from the one minute intro from Ryan than I did even from the like I listened to the the one on one with you and Ryan and it was so beautiful and I didn't understand a fucking bit of it like it was cool but it made no sense so it didn't change like not that I would meta it anyways but I just thought it was cool and beautiful and made no sense. But where Ryan's like, oh yeah, she's like elf touched and she's this cool class and stuff. Um, so that, that's like, I think Dre, I'm trying to think who else. Oh, and, and Beat'em, um, Dre did not like Beat'em because Beat'em is, is, you know, one of those, de like the gnomes here are like with the devils basically. And so that's why I very intentionally created Victor. Like whoever I was going to create was going to be uh, connected with, with the, the gnomes of Nimheim somehow. And in that book, that world book is just written so freaking well. It was literally like one paragraph where it just talked about Kareev. And I love the idea of how uh, in Strahd, right? Like they're just re-releasing Strahd and they kind of changed it. They realized like the wizards realized that they were being so like bad to like some of those kind of gypsy cultures and stuff like that. And like, but the Kareev are this one little nugget of, of evil. And then it just wrote itself, I think with, with and Ryan, you know, we kind of talked about it, and then the geography all worked out perfectly. Well, the, the call there are an evil group yes. within the Kareev. Within the Kareev, the and they, they work for the gnomes. And so, yeah, so. I, I just think, because people ask, and it's been, I, I've had people ask me about it before, as far as running in an evil campaign. And so, and that's why that question I thought was interesting is, do your characters care about each other? And I think some may, some may not but i think also too it comes down to as a character you also know you're relying whether sylvester likes cutter or not he knows he also has to rely on this guy for his life yeah it's about the yeah it's about like, the party soldiers in arm you know i may hate the guy next to me but he's got my back i gotta have yeah. his otherwise both of us are gonna die yeah when you're in the foxhole kind of situation it, it so. doesn't matter if who's next to you exactly yeah so for the people in the stream, though, if you guys yeah. watched the last episode, like yeah. Ryan, I think totally, you know, oh. he used that dagger Ooh. against me big time. Oh. Um, that was a good one. It, it, yeah, it just was beautiful. I mean, it that was, was a, that was, ah, I got a, 
I don't want to watch him. Victor, Victor was hard because uh-huh. after after Dre died, right? Not giving it a lot away. But I, I, we talked about this earlier that Dre was kind of overly complicated in a bunch of different ways. So when me, yeah. me and him were talking about making Victor, we were like, you know, let's let's make an evil character like w- before you even touch him. He's going to have an evil class. He's going to have evil looking spells. He's going to have a bunch of other stuff. Um, so then when you play him, you just have to basically play up what you already have and then build on that, which I think you've done a really good job of like building because I also said, don't give me a big backstory. Don't give me daggers. Don't give me anything. Just give yeah. me a little bit. So I got like two, two little paragraphs. Like I, yeah. I got, that's about it. And then you, you slowly keep sending me this, like, what about this? And what about this? And kind of build the backstory. But when I was doing what I did the other day without getting too deep, um, I really tried to use a lot of what people had. Um, and, um, you, there's not a lot for Victor. There's just not. So he was the last one I did. And I was just like, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? And then suddenly I was like, gotta do this. Gotta do this. And if you guys remember, I asked you like three plus weeks ago, like what's your character's biggest fear? That's um, not scary at all. Yeah. And then, you know, some of that came back. Some of it didn't. Some of you guys, like your backstory is writ wrote yourself. You know, I use some direct daggers on some people. <laughs> I used some, I mean, the one for, for Daryana, I think was, was a really, was a really interesting, um, but. Yeah, uh, that was rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think everyone, I think everyone either, either really had a dagger come back and bite them or it was just a really, really hard choice. So eventually you guys will watch the VOD for that. Um, That's so interesting, like knowing what I know about mine, it's so interesting to hear you talk about other people's, cause like, for Cordit, that wasn't, it wasn't even, it was not a hard choice. It really was not. And I think oh. that says a lot about her character. Oh. Like, I think it was a very, very telling of Cordelia that it was not difficult for her. Well, it, yours was like instantaneous. You, you oh were yeah, like, instant. You were like, hitting your hands the whole time, but then as soon as the choice came up, you're like, this, yeah. this is what I'm doing. But I think uh, that's also like the fact that a choice Gordon. wasn't like a, what should have been like a choice wasn't a choice really, and she just yeah. had it. Like I think that mm. is very some telling. people though. Some people I really I'm gonna mm. say I'm gonna it's say a, I, I think the hardest choices here were probably fuck. I mean it, it has to be Victor, Sylvester, and, and Dariana. I think I think um, what did I even do for Beatum? Can, can I? No, that's okay. Okay. Um, but those yeah. three, I think, were were the um, like it really came down to because what I wanted was a difficult choice. Um, but Cordelia's, I was like, this is what it has to be. But I yeah. don't think it's gonna be that hard of a choice. And um, Cutters was kind of like a um, again, I don't want to give too much away. Was really was really you know dagger related. Um, I think, and was really um, interesting in how it was going to play out compared to like the real world and stuff. So, uh, again, if you haven't watched that, you have to watch that. I think what I liked about it, Ryan, was that you took away the mechanics. Like, you made it about the story, and then and then you kind of just chose what the role was, and it didn't really matter, right? Yeah, like, it, no, the role didn't really matter. It, nice. it was just kind of wrapped up the wrapped up the end of it, you know, like um, like you chose what you chose, and then your role kind of helped decide how it played out. Like, did it yeah. go? Did your choice, like that, you had a hard time choosing, go smoothly, or did you make this terrible choice, and then like it kind of bit you in the ass too? You know what I mean? So the role didn't really matter, and I didn't decide it beforehand. It was literally just like based on what you decide to do. Um, like I think Jess's role as Dariana was really interesting, and what what happened afterwards, I think it made it even more impactful. Um, I did not want to pass that role. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. But so uh, I felt that way, like. Retroactively, I'm so fascinated that you didn't want to succeed. That's oh, I, well, I, that's because of you, Eric. These. Oh my god! Like you can fail into fun. Like I that that's my big oh, takeaway from this whole campaign is like it literally right, fucking yeah. doesn't matter what you roll. When is. I when I have new people making characters, I the very first thing I say is, mate. Like first of all, I don't we don't touch mechanics until you have a character concept already decided. I hate I hate mechanics in the character creation period. 
But on top of that, one of the very first things I say is like, pick a flaw and play it up. Like it's so much fun. Like if you're if your character is going to be like super talkative, talk the whole time. Play that RP up. If you're going to be, <laughs> you know, super sarcastic, play that RP up. Like whatever you're going to do, like pick a trait, especially a flaw, and just you know play it up as hard as you can. You know, and that's what's one great thing about like all the people in this campaign is, you know, you you can really feel the personality of each character. So you can almost you know you get the sense of like what they're going to do um, because you know. Cutter's always gonna um, you know, want to get the job done and like just be focused in and you know Cordelia is gonna have some shitty remark to say about something um, oh um, I figured I didn't need to say anything that I could oh, just smile uh, yeah so I didn't get the shitty remark um, but yeah I don't know why our bot hates Andy I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna do the exact same thing and it's gonna work for me. Watch. Ah, shit. I was really hoping it would do that. That would have been super cool if I did it at work. Yeah, unfortunately. Andy mentioned it might be like a cooldown or something. Oh, God. The bot. Streamlabs. So. No. Technology oh. is not our friend on the stream tonight. Um. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I don't know if Sketchrisk is still with us, um, but I'm going to. Um, oh, this shit is so good! Oh my are, god. Are, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? I'll talk all fucking night. I don't give a shit. But I, at some point, I'm gonna show. Um, Sketchrisk is Sketchrisk's art. Just give me the sign. I got. I got the link copied. Yeah. So then. Oh, he's just, here. Sketchrisk yeah. is still here. So you can just create a new tab, and it's just a Dropbox window, and then you can just open. I would just say let's let's. Let's pick, let's start, let's go the order of the stream. Let's go Cordelia, we'll go Victor. Uh, oh, it's like all the, okay. Jess and Dariana are um, together. And then we'll go um, Beatum and, uh, and Sylvester. We should totally have Jason put the Beatum uh, skin on and do it, because you know he'll nail it. Oh, yeah. Impress the fans out there. Oh so God. this. I have a team lead. <laughs> this. Oh, yeah. So Cordelia is actually more the one that's cut off on the left. She got. Oh um, wow! Yeah. She Are you had kidding me? Hell, baby. So this is Cordelia. Yeah. So, like, just content. I guess, like, I. So I did some original character art. I have a series of. I drew everybody as a tarot card, and then so we're good. gonna use. I was Best. gonna do the character art, but I have a very like anime look i chickened out at the last minute i messaged ryan i don't want i don't want to do it um but this is actually great because then we got sketchers involved and his stuff is he really well, sketchers sketchers is someone i found on twitter a while ago and he actually i i have this home brew world that i'm working on and he did one of the very original maps for that um so i had um worked with him nice. before and he was just such a nice guy and his the art is just so good um, it captures so, the tone but, very, oh, very so well. well. Don't you guys Especially. think though there's a place for both? Like I find Sam's and and this both appealing. Oh, absolutely. And like diff in different ways. Like one hundred percent. Yeah. Well, and like I'm not just showed, smoozing you. That's why we showed all of the all of the drawings throughout the beginning of the stream too. It, well, yeah. Yeah, it so, captures it in such a good way. Because what what's really nice about it is yeah, evil is fun. I like it all the time. But for some people, you know, you kinda need a little bit of a cool down. You know what I mean? So when you end a session that's like, you know, pretty pretty rough to then have like a stick yeah. figure drawing that's kind of funny. Like it's just like it's a nice way to wrap it. Yeah. Um, so why don't so that's Cordelia um, and various options. Why don't you that's bring amazing. It was tough. I was sitting there just like, okay, I like I just I liked something about can, every single can, one. Can we just for, for, not that I'm a mechanical guy, but I finally read the how you get armor class and why Ryan nerfed you. Yeah, because it's Sorry, wow. I don't, you. I don't know that I can really. Can you make that Dropbox little pop up go away? Well, you can. He just stretches it. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, there we go. just the way I have the window frame, it kind of skews it. So. Noise. I mean, I guess I could try to. Yeah, that's. Let's see if I can move the. So what I really loved about this artist, Ryan, was that Ryan is so patient with me because I'm very like I like to talk a lot, I like to type a lot. And, and they took these things that I gave to Ryan and it exactly translated to these small changes in the picture. Cause this is the original one that Ryan sent me. Oh yeah. Well, and you should Did you see... choose the skull in his hand, Ryan. 
What's up? No, that was all Skechris. Oh man, I, I, I love that. So I'm I wrote these. That mini. I wrote yeah. these character descriptions, and I said that you you make um, you know figures out of skulls. When I first see, when this first popped up, um, yeah. the first thing I said to, to Skechris was, "Dude, the, the 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 you know my dear Yorick pose that he's got going on right now is so perfect for Victor. Nailed it. It's crazy, yeah. perfect. Oh well. yeah. And so what I what I had him add to the picture, you can't see it in this one, but he has this really ornate uh, curved dagger. That's like literally a dagger that I gave to Ryan that has no story. All we know is that Victor will not use it. And he lets Dariana use it because Dariana's dagger got eaten by this mushroom thing. Like in the, and she needs blood to, to have armor. And yeah, she has blood armor. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and then he has like a little prayer book, but Chernabog has no prayers. So. Yeah. Um, do you want to bring up uh, um, Dariana and Cutter? Oh, and that's Alcava's mace. Nice. Yeah, that's a mace of destruction. Yeah, yeah. I've seen I've seen the updated sketches since since this. Yes. yes. So this oh is Daryana and Cutter. So good. My Cutter's God. looking good. Is that Cutter's looking good? That's Atticus's face. Yeah. That's why. That's why I, I, like, I, I, yeah, that's why I, look I good. told him the whole story Damn. about how Atticus I was wearing Atticus's no, face. I think that's Atticus from Jason's was. headshot. Yeah. <laughs> So he did a really good job. And in the updated um, picture too, he's done a little bit more on the eyes that really like the face looks really good, but you can tell there's something off about the eyes. And that's one thing Jason kept telling me was like, I, I like he does look good because Atticus's face, but you can tell that there's something off. And I think he did a really, really, really good job capturing that. And then Daryana just looks amazing. Well, the good thing too about these two pieces of character art is Jess and Jason are like artists in their own right. And they yeah. sent these um the original character art we had were these awesome compositions they put together that were just dead on to what the characters look like so it was really easy to just send those straight over to him and just be like it's exactly this like don't like this is this is their vision they're definitely artistic enough to do that and then mix this with all the stuff that sam drew to get you know um the references like you know i just feel like between the stories and sam's art and then jess and jason's art it was just really you know, there was a lot to go on, and I think they turned out really, really well. Um, and I think, and I know that Daryana's has been updated. I told him about it. It's embedded in the chest. It's not a necklace. So that's been updated as well. Um, do you want to do um, Beatums? And I think this is, and these are, I don't think I added the later. That the one we had too had Brian in it, which I love. Like Brian, like, oh. tied the whole thing together. Oh, yeah, we'll show Brian in the whole group <laughs> picture. So these are the two variations of Beat'em. So we went with the, the Beat'em on the left because his hat is... Um, Sam did all of the, the great work for that to ask Andy to get the hat perfect for the tarot card. So it was a really the good reference. The best part use. of that was I drew... He only we only ever had a visual like a verbal description, so I kind of drew it, and he was like, "Okay, that's good, but pointier." So then I sketched it again, and he's like, "Good, but point." And this went. I have like four or five pictures where Andy's like, "Okay, that's really good, but pointier." <laughs> um, and then oh. why don't we do uh, Sylvester Let's and Annie? Up. Back to our uh, recap of the whole thing when uh, we forgot to cover beat him shaving off his beard and posing as a baby. Well, oh, no, we talked oh, about that very briefly. Baby. Yeah, the, the Bradley. But, but something that was interesting was that he said he looks a lot younger than we thought he would. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would think he was older, but without the beard, he looks younger. Um, so this is Sylvester and, um, and Annie. Aw, Annie's so cute. Looking good. What I love is like you wouldn't even. It could be like any campaign. Yeah. Like it's timeless. Oh, also, I don't. I know we didn't get to like to all the little doodles, but all of the drawings that have Sylvester have little like anime stars around them because he's just <laughs> so damn pretty. Yeah, he's he's supposed to. He's a really good looking guy. <laughs> um, and then I think. Uh, do you want to do Brian? kind of cut off i can't um that, that's just did you know that you were gonna bring a blood elemental like into the mix um as soon as i got the necklace yeah but um that oh, wasn't the, planned it wasn't planned no, no it was it's one of an possession the necklace yeah. actually alakava had it so technically she could have summoned a There's blood no. elemental too yeah well, but i think you guys are already getting wrecked brian has like become a character like it's yeah. not that you just like summoned him to fight 
Like, he doesn't talk. Like, he doesn't... We can't to really... Beat him. The only person who can talk to him is beat him to speak Infernal. But, like, <laughs> just Brian has, and, and Annie, too, like, have become characters. And I think that's really fun. Yeah. Well, especially because, like, the good campaigns, right, you see, like, a giant bear. There's usually always a bear of some sort, right? Well, Kirk well, like, Kirk Kirk is, like, a blood element. Yeah, a blood element. <laughs> well, when, when we yeah. go to the group shot... You know, you'll see, I mean, this is, as soon as I saw the group shot and he did such a good job of like aligning everybody into yeah. like this really good pose, I was just like, damn, like, we, we find did this, party. we did, this is a fucking crew. Like, if you saw this walking down the street, you're not fucking with it. You know? <laughs> um, so, yeah, we can just keep you ready for the fight. Well, let's yeah. do the group oh, shot, yeah. baby. Ooh, uh, new updated Hopefully Courtney. it'll fit. We'll see. I might have to resize. And Janelle's like, Brian is cool. Yes, I will have to resize. So I sh I've okay. showed you the colored Cordelia, right, Sam? Oh, yeah, baby. It's too much. You, like, zoom out? It's, I mean, if I zoom out, it's going to get the bottom. But, yeah, I guess I can do it like this. Do, like, a scroll. Man, Cordelia's fine. Such a wide shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There. Is that? Are you the? Are you the far right? One, two. There, beat him. Oh that's yeah, beat about, him. Yeah, it's about as good as I can get it. That's okay. We can just cut Sam off. That's oh, that's okay. fine right there. That's oh, that's there fine. Oh, there we right go. There we go. That Oof. look at that Oof. fucking crew. Like, look at, that's a vibe right there. That is a vibe. Getris, my man. Official artist, like, oh, he's got a Twitter. Sketchrisk, put on your at Sketchrisk. Yeah, your drop, your shit, Sketch drop, Sketch your shit. drop it, drop it. Instagram, I know, um, you know, started using that a little bit more. So I just put the tags in, please. And then I'm gonna, I, I haven't talked to Sketchrisk about this yet, but uh, we, you know, we have four Miss and Midgard characters that uh they need some character <laughs> art too you're gonna be busy dude yeah so we might need to ask uh if you're if, if you're only there that. was a pandemic that would keep him at home well i'm uh, pretty sure cranking out art i know he's not american i'm pretty sure oh. he's australian right oh dude that's where we're going there you go episode 100 filmed in, filmed in wrong. melbourne but yeah uh so i know that um the Twitter and the Instagram for Sketchrisk is at Sketchrisk. Um, so drop a ton of follows, you know, do some commissions once he's done with ours. He's got more to do, so don't take Also, if you want to tell us what your name is, we only ever refer to you as Sketchrisk. Yeah. And sometimes it's weird. I don't know if you, if you don't, you don't have to. Wait, did if Ryan If we could himself? build like an evil Australian fan base, it'd be easier for them to watch us because it wouldn't be late there. Yeah, that's true. What a, well, that's the thing is like when I'm when I'm more of like a night shift schedule, I'll get a message from him at like two o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh, nice. well, we're good. Um, but yeah, no, I'm super. It looks so good. There we I go. Guess be the next day. Yeah. So, yeah, drop a bunch of follows. He's the man. So, yeah, I'm very excited for this. And uh and we'll see if we'll see if we can get some art for Miss Midgard too. If we get if he's still open for for four more commissions, we'll uh, we'll have to we'll have to see. But the price yeah. is going up. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> for sure. He's like, oh, it's really good. So uh, it'll be double this time. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I was just fixing to ask about that, Andy. So here's the thing. Um, so I think we're about wrapping up. So I would like to raid somebody, um, but we can. Oh yeah, I got to jump into Night Knight's Discord. Drop your Discord link at some point, Knight, and I'll uh, and I'll copy paste that real quick, and we can you can get some more uh, people in there too if you're down. Um, but I want to raid somebody, so I am going to. Um, We'll keep the chat up, we'll keep talking, but we will um, switch the channel over to um, the thank you screen so we can run a thank you for all the followers. Um, nice. What up, Isk? Do you have somebody you're gonna raid? I don't have anybody. 
Uh, the only person D &D. I follow who's online is T-Pain. So I'm just looking at the recommended channels. You follow T-Pain? T-Pain plays video games and he's hilarious. Okay. Um, we'll, uh, huh. so we'll raid D&D &D time. So if you guys want to stick around for just a little bit, we'll hop Morning, over into that stream. Sketchris. I mean, we got, we got some people in the world. Cersei Victory, Sketchris. I mean... You know, we're definitely meeting the right kinds of people it's here. It's Mr. Isk to you. Mr. Isk, yes. Um, and we had 52 if you guys didn't notice. Booyah! Yes. Thank you guys. We're just milking it now. Really pushing us over the edge. I super appreciate it. Um, does anyone have anything else to add? I, I feel like that was like more than I'd hoped for. And the, t yeah, the talk seriously. at the end was, was just Thank great. you. To yeah. my fellow players, Ryan, you are the world's okayest DM. <laughs> I actually, for Ryan's birthday, I got him this really nice thing on Etsy. Do you have it near you? I don't know. I do. I have it in here somewhere. I got him. I want to. Uh, I, I handed him this gift, and I was like, I that. just want you to know that I mean this from the bottom of my heart, and that I hope that every time you see this, that you think of me. And then he was like, I don't want to open it. <laughs> and if you guys want to see any like other hangout sessions like this, too, let us know. Yeah. Yeah, we have more people watching this. Or if it's this. completely boring, don't we won't do it anymore. But if he can't if hear us hear right more, now, don't, don't you suspect uh, that? Oh, this is my nice. gift that I got from Ryan. <laughs> That's brilliant. Nice. Yeah, I think we have more people watching us just like sit and talk about D and D than us actually doing. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I think it all it'll. it'll it was fun good. getting like questions and stuff. They're waiting for Jess kinda, to like, drop a knowledge that. bomb on them. We got a more joke. friendo time. So Ryan. I asked. I asked if um, everybody liked streams like this. If they want to just like hang out streams too, where we just talk about the game and the characters. And... So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I like we can always do. We, got, the, we, got uh, we can always do that. What Crickle Raw does, and have the um, <laughs> Ox Machina or, or you know random chat streams, where we can all get together. I'd be down to do that. Look at that, Andy the Math Magician. He had talked to me about um, running some type of like dungeon planning session, hangout session. I know my DM prep ended up just kind of being like a, a chatty hangout too with me actually trying to get a little bit of work done. Um, you know what'd be cool too is doing like a, a, a backstory session, maybe. About writing that could be or fun. about my like, backstories. Because like we're so into backstory and creating backstory, I know that can be difficult for a lot of people and it might be cool to. Yeah. Just kind for of sure. give our perspective. Well, well, I definitely, you know, the DM <laughs> prep session. What's up? I was going to say, if we do that, I'd want to turn them off. So I kind of like what we did the last session where there's an individual thing. I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, it would just be solo. Oh, well, I, from what I got from what Jason said, I thought he was talking about like uh, like helping create a backstory, not talking about the backstories that we created. Like how you yeah, yeah. Not related to what we do, but yeah. like because we're so invested in backstory, there might be people that were interested in like like our thought processes about how we go about well, it. Well, I know Andy Prime, Andy Prime was talking about, Evil Andy was talking about doing like a bunch of different DM things like like product reviews for different modules and books that are coming out, talking about doing like DM round tables where we sit down and talk about like our DM processes and stuff like that. So I'd be super down to also do like, you know, background and character creation, you know, our, from an RP perspective and stuff. I'd be super down for that. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Cool. If you want to hear my process, tune in for when I do my DM prep sessions. Uh, I had one yesterday, so that'll be up on YouTube soon and I'll be having, doing another one next Thursday. Um, that'll put us at six streams. Now that we have over 50 followers, once we hit seven, we might, we might hit the affiliate and you guys can start earning cheer points. Um, <laughs> of course we have to do the filter each time. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's about it. So if everyone wants to just stick around for a second, um, we will go to our thank you screen. We'll thank all of our followers again that came by and then blood bids. Blood drops. Yeah. We could call them drops. We'll see. Um, and um, and then we will raid D and D time. So thank you guys so much for following. Um, thank you. Around after the raid, um, if uh, catch us on Wednesday um, and Thursday too, and then catch any math magician on all of his stuff. So thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, bye.